Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Virtual Schools Summit, the 2023 version from BKK Kids and Chiang Mai Kids. Uh, we've been doing this now for three years, and uh, I got to say, this is day two of two for us. Today, we're going to be talking about schools that have American curriculum, IB World schools, kindergartens, and some other nice little treats from around the country of Thailand that I'm pretty excited to be showcasing tonight. Um, but as we did last night, um, I'll first, you know, tonight, last night I didn't do this. I said, hi, my name is Stephen Lettick. I'm the director of BKK Kids in Chiang Mai Kids. It's really nice to see everyone again. I start to see, I'm, I'm starting to see people coming into the rooms right now. If you're on YouTube, if you're on Facebook, remember that this is actually a live broadcast. We, um, you know, I'm real, you know, I'm not, I'm not one of these AI figures out there. Uh, and one of the really great things that we had yesterday was that many people actually chimed in with questions for the schools, for our presenters. Uh, you know, we have heads of schools, we have directors of admissions, we have counselors, we have specialists um, who are going to be talking today. So this is a really great opportunity for you to actually ask your questions and get them answered on the spot right now. This is a overview of the schools that we're going to be looking at uh, yesterday and today. Yesterday, if you missed the presentations for the British curriculum schools. The good news is, is that we have those recordings up on YouTube and Facebook. Um, and we'll also be sending out emails. If you, you know, were registered for this uh, summit, then you are able to absolutely, um, you know, see those and we will be uh, sending them out to you. Today, we're going to be focusing on schools that have an American curriculum, IB World Schools and Kindergartens. You can see here, boy, it's going to be, you know, the, we're, we're talking the next four, four and a half hours of presentations, of videos, of questions and answers, and some other cool stuff that we um, are going to be giving away as well. So I encourage you to stick around and, and check it all out. Here are the list of schools that um, uh, that we were are going to be walking through tonight. And you can see here, we've got American School, we've got D-Prep, we have the ISB International School, KIS International School, KPIS International School, uh, Kids Kingdom Kindergarten uh, and Kids Kingdom Rem Rudy. Uh, we have NIST International School, Prem uh, International School. Uh, and then we have Unity Concord and Verso International School as well. Uh, sorry, we have RIS. I, I skipped that one there as well. So, and I apologize for that, but we will be um, seeing videos from them and having presentations from them in short order. As I mentioned a few seconds ago, I like to give, you know, three, four, five minutes here at the top of the hour here uh, as reading starts where people can come in the room. As you're coming in the room, do me the favor of, uh, you know, saying hi, put a, you know, get used to putting a, a message in the chat there. You know, if you're willing, put your name and also where you're, are you um, viewing us from today? Are you in Thailand? Are you in Hong Kong? We had some people from uh, Malaysia, Singapore yesterday, Korea, you know, are you in other parts of the world? Um, Japan, maybe. Australia, New Zealand, um, you know, we actually have a global reach at BKK Kids. Uh, we, we get to see those analytics of who comes to our website and reads our posts and downloads our guides and whatnot. Um, but, uh, you know, we're, we're interested in know where you're from. So do me a favor, put, put where you're from in that, in that uh, chat there and, and let me know. Next item up for bids, as they like to say, is... You know, we have lots of information. The Virtual School Summit is just one of many things that we produce at BKK Kids that are valuable for parents. Uh, and so another thing that we produce is something that we call our Activities in Camps Guide. As you will hear me, um, you know, uh, in, in, throughout the night, or sorry, throughout the day today, as you'll hear me say, uh, you know, I am, you know, I have three kids and I know what it means to wonder. It's like, what are we going to do on the weekend? What are we going to do, uh, you know, on those long weekends, especially, you know, when there's like a three or 40 weekend, or what are we going to do during those school holidays, like winter break or, you know, Songkrong break or, you know, that long, you know, summer break, uh, you know, how, what are we going to do with the kids? Here's the good news. We have now for two years put together an activities and camps guide that curates the best activities around Thailand for you. Lots of them in Bangkok, but also other parts uh, of the country as well. And what I like is it's not just activities like, hey, you can go to this water park or hey, here's a gym or here's a place like that. There's also you know camps as well. So like full, you know, holiday camps that you can send your kids to 
Um, they're educational, that are STEM-based, that are activity-based, that are sports, that are arts. Um, lots and lots of options there, and we've gone through and curated it. And here's the best news of all. You can get this guide by simply coming over to bkkkids.com or changmykids.com and entering your email address, and we will send it to you for free. The 2023 version is going to be coming out very, very shortly, so I would recommend that you over throw your... Um, Throw your name on the list there, and we'll make sure to send you the latest version as soon as it comes out. And um, that will be that. In a similar vein, we also have our flagship, uh, you know, product that I'm super, super proud of. We're in our, you know, we've been doing this for a decade, uh, and we have recently released just a, a, you know, about six weeks ago, maybe eight weeks ago. Actually, we're in March now, <laughs> so it's almost three months now. We released the 2023 BKK Kids International School Guide. And this is an incredibly valuable resource for parents who are considering uh, you know, moving schools, who are considering moving to Bangkok for school or anywhere in Thailand, really. More than 150 pages, literally 100 and you know, some odd schools uh, you know, uh, at the same time. And it gives you all of the essential information about all of these schools, like, like uh, curriculum, like tuition. Uh, ECA, the extra extracurricular activities, um, you know, size of the campus, where is it located? We have a nice map in there. Um, and, you know, again, just like the activity guide, it's free. You know, we're lucky to have such great sponsorship from these schools who participate in the guide with us that we can give it to you for free. And so I really encourage you again to go over to BKK Kids and, um, you know, just all you have to do is throw in your email address and we will send it to you immediately in PDF form. If you if you prefer a hard copy, you can always contact us as well and we will mail it to you. But there you go. A few more things before I see my friends uh, for our first presenters are you know, showing up in the green room here and I'm pretty excited about this. But before I get started with them, um, I want to just and also remind everyone that throughout the the summit, we like to make sure that everybody has a great time and has a, has a reason to be here. And so we have a couple of great gift uh, giveaways. We have some gift cards for Amazon, 50 pound gift cards for Amazon that we're going to be giving away. And we do give those away as, um, you know, through a random drawing. So you actually have to be signed up for the summit. Only people who come to the summit uh, who are, or who are registered for the summit are eligible for this. The second one that we give away is eight tickets to Vana Nava. And if you're unfamiliar with this, this is a fantastic water park uh, that's, you know, it's really a, a highly sought after thing. It's one of those great activities in our guide. Um, and so we'll be giving away eight tickets. So that's great for two families of four or, you know, a family and a bunch of friends. And this is my personal favorite. I will return to this a couple of times tonight, which is a luxury night giveaway, uh, at the So in the So hotel in Bangkok. And so as much as we love our children, as much as we love our families, you know, having that, you know, that night giveaway is a really great idea. And, you know, so I, you know, I wish you the best of luck. We'll see who is eligible for that. Now we have a ton of schools to get through tonight. So without further ado, I would like to bring our first school onto the, the screen here. This is International School Bangkok. They are one of the top international schools in Thailand and Asia. They run an accredited and challenging international curriculum guided by leading educational research and global best practice incorporated into North American and international baccalaureate diploma frameworks. They prepare students to become leaders in meeting the ever-changing needs of the world and equip them with the knowledge and skills to become caring global citizens. Their vision is to enrich communities through the intellectual, humanitarian, and creative thoughts and actions of learners. They are driven by their core values, their mission, and their definition of learning. And I am excited to bring on, let's see, David Greppel. Or is it Harriet first? Oh, wow. You know what? Here's what we're going to do. We have so many people who are ready to be here. Let's see. Is it going to be Harriet and Robert? Is that who we're going to do? It's David first. Ah, I apologize. I apologize. In, in my in my notes here, it said David. So that, let's go. We'll go for David. Shazam. David. Uh, hi. Hello. How are you? Welcome. Uh, wonderful to see you. Yeah. <laughs> good morning. Yeah, sorry. Yeah, Wednesday morning. So it's one, it's one of those. But yeah, good, good no, to you be know, here. Thank you so much maybe for, I need... for having us, and we look forward to sharing more about the school. Awesome. Maybe I need another cup of coffee. I think that is potentially what <laughs> is the problem here. Um, but uh, you know, as our first school, what I did yesterday, and I want to offer this to you, everyone here today as well, 
you know, I just gave the, you know, the standard blurb about the, about the school. I'd love for you to just say, you know, as someone who is there, what, you know, you know, tell us about what is, what does it mean to be at ISB? What does it, what's it feel like? What's, you know, what's the heart of ISB to you? I would say for, for the most importantly for the students, it's about opportunities. Um, here at the school, um, whether you're in pre-K, like uh, grade one, middle school or high school, uh, we always try to have as many opportunities for kids to discover uh, a passion or to follow the, those passions they may already have. And so I would say one thing that sets us apart from not just schools in Bangkok, but worldwide is just the variety and opportunities kids can have, whether it is in sports, of course, arts, sciences, um, you know, or performing arts, things like that. Like it really, I, I would say that is what really sets us apart in terms of just the volume, but also quality of the opportunities that the kids would have here, not just in the classroom, but, you know, outside of the classroom after school and on weekends. Fantastic. So I know one of the things as a parent in Bangkok, you know, it, 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 we tend to talk about or ask is, you know, you are not in, you know, Bangkok, you're in your niche. So t tell us, what does it, what's it mean to be a, a part of that community? How does that set you apart, change the environment, offer other opportunities, those kinds of things? Yeah. So I would say it's like where we're located. That is one of the opportunities that, you know, we have for the kids. And so, um, you know, I always try to paint a picture to parents about what it means to live, you know, or be close to the school in the sense that like, it, it reminds me a lot of what it was like for me growing up where I could get on my bicycle and go to school on my own, you know, or you can do what a lot of people like to do for here and ride a golf cart um, to work. And of course, usually a parent driving the kids to, to school in, in that golf cart or, you know, walking uh, in a, you know, you know, wonderful and safe community to be able to do that. And of course, the school itself is open into the evenings on weekends. So like the playgrounds, a lot of the sports facilities are available to families, you know, throughout the week over the holidays as well. So, and like within Nichitani, you know, everything you might sort of need for your day to day, you know, you have access to here. We've got a villa market, which is a big sort of international supermarket. Um, there's cafes, there's spas, there's a Starbucks across the street from the school. And if you want that sort of more of a downtown sort of, you know, life of having or, or what is common in town is go to a mall. We've got a central mall five minutes away that you can actually drive your golf cart to. Um, mm. So I would say definitely if you're looking for a lifestyle that's a bit more of a, on a quieter side or there's more greenery around um definitely you know nichitani is that kind of you know spot um for those families and if you want your kids to have an opportunity to be more independent or to have that sense of you know having some agency and having you know that independence to go out and go go see your friends on your own go to school or come home from school on your own rather than having to get picked up or take take a bus or a bts or things like that I think that's a really nice opportunity for kids to have and somewhat unique, um, definitely in in Thailand, but more like all, overall, in, you know, in Southeast Asia, not many schools, you know, have that sort of opportunity for kids to ha experience that, yeah. you know, that kind of school you know, yeah. experience or having that, you know, morning and afternoon. So take me to curriculum academics, um, you know, sort of the core of usually why people think of school, you know, uh, what, what sets ISB apart? What, you know, what are some of the common questions that you receive either from prospective parents and families or, you know, people who are in, in already, you know, already enrolled in a part of the community? Yeah. So I would say the most things I get are asked or asked about is our curriculum. And so I often, usually it's not in the form of a question. It's a, so you're an American curriculum school. What does that mean? And so I say, well, in, in essence, we have a lot of American heritage at the school. So we were started, or we started on the U.S. Embassy in the early 50s. Um, and so, you know, majority of our students were from the U.S. for, for, for decades. Um, and we sort of, over time, you know, we've changed into a truly international school. And I mean that in every sense of the word, because even our curriculum has become international. So while we do sort of still maintain or teach towards some U.S. standards, in particular, like reading or math, the approaches that we take come from all over the world. So we have uh, a curriculum designer on staff. And so her job is to look around what's and do look at research, see what the world is doing in terms of education. What can we take from the best ideas around the world and incorporate that into our own curriculum? You know, so 
as an example, the way we teach, you know, PE in elementary school is borrowed from the Canadian curriculum and the way we teach math is borrowed from the Singapore uh, curriculum, right? Or the way we, you know, teach science that's borrowed from the Australian curriculum where in the sense that it's applied science, right? So we, as, while we do teach to many of our standards that we teach towards US standards, um, the skill sets or the approaches that we want the kids to be taking are borrowed from from around the world. And so in every year we reevaluate, we look at, okay, what does the research say now after you know another year? Do we reinforce this? Do we change it slightly? So we're an ever evolving sort of uh, project um, as far as like education goes, but we really try to bring the best for our students in terms and to make sure that we sort of teach towards our school values and maintain our school mission, you know, and bring excellence, um, you know, from, from our school to the rest of the world through our graduates. Fantastic. Uh, here's here's a, here's a fairly specific question for you, but do you have a, um, a mobile phone policy? Like are, are kids allowed to bring mobile phones into the class and, and use them? Yeah, um, so kids can bring phones to school. Um, we wouldn't stop them from that, but um, depends on which division you're in. Um, if in elementary school, the kids, when they bring a backpack, the backpack stays outside on a hook, uh, you know, and the phone stays in there throughout the day. Um, we don't, and like elementary school kids, they don't really, all their friends are there. What are, They don't really have a need for the phone. So phones are usually just for, to call mom and dad after school. Um, for middle schoolers and high schoolers, they get a locker and the phone needs to stay in the locker. Um, throughout class times, if they want to pick it up for a break or for lunch or something, more than welcome to, but during class time, stays in the locker unless they need it for something that the teacher asked them to, to bring it for, right? We, okay. phones are a useful tool. So every now and then we would use them, but um, for, for class, 99% of the time, you know, phones are not in the classroom. Sure. There's a question here from one of our participants. If the parent is dual nationality, do they still go on a waiting list? And as I know how hard it is to get into ISB. All right. That's a good question. So, um, it really depends on when you apply, what grade you're applying for. Um, it, it, there's a lot of caveats as sort of, you know, being like in terms of applying to the school. So my recommendation would be to get in touch with us directly at ISB to complete an inquiry form. And then we, you know, we'll work with that family um, toward, towards enrollment. Like our job as an admissions office is to get, you know, families into the school, right? So I, in essence, while I work in ISB, I work for for the families that get in touch with us. So that that's my role essentially, get as many people into the school as I can. Um, so my suggestion would be get in touch with, with admissions and we'll find, you know, the right pathway for you to take to, to make, get into ISB, you know, as, as soon as it's possible. Fantastic, all right. Duh, another question from one of our participants, uh, and I want to remind everybody, you know, we've just gotten started now. I see there's a bunch of people in the room. Um, you know, we are live. This is an opportunity to talk directly to, uh, you know, our, the individuals that we have here, like Mr. David. And so through your question in the chat, you, you know, if you're on Facebook or YouTube, we, we see them all. Do Does ISB offer AP levels as well as the International Baccalaureate? It's like, can we yeah, so I'm glad you asked. Possible? Yeah, I'm glad you asked because I, I realized that when you asked about curriculum, I didn't mention this. So, um, so yeah, so we are not an IB school per se, but from middle school onwards, we do take that inquiry-based approach. Um, and so kids who are in middle school going towards high school are sort of being taught um, in the in that inquiry-based approach, which is, you know, very um, sort of very IB in that sense, international baccalaureate for, for those who are not sure, don't, don't use IB. Now, once kids reach uh, 11th grade, that's when we have the IB diploma. So we offer that. Um, as far as I know, I think we have the largest variety of IB DP subjects mm. um, in Bangkok uh, to choose from. And uh, for AP, I think this year we have five or six AP classes that kids can take. Most of them are from grade 10 and uh, upwards. Now, we do have sort of a few pathways to graduation as well, which I think is important to note. So about 80% of our kids do the full IB diploma. Um, that's why we have such a large variety of classes, but we also have something which we sort of coined as the personal choice diploma. And so this is for students who maybe IB diploma is not their preferred pathway um, or it's not the pathway they need to get into the college of their, of, of, you know, of their dreams, uh, or maybe it's just, or they're, you know, thinking about like not maybe, maybe college is not the what they want to do immediately after, or maybe it's 
that they know a very specific way or they know exactly what they need to do to get into the college they want and they don't need the IB. So they want to focus on the classes or the subjects they do need to, you know, focus on in order to get that. So we offer those two choices. Uh, and for the personal choice diploma, you can still take IB classes. Mm-hmm. You would still go to the same classroom, take the same test as everyone and get a certificate for those classes at the end. You can take AP classes if you do that. You can take our own high level, like high school level classes. Uh, and we also partner with GOA, which is called Global Online Academies. And there, I think there's over 40 online classes kids can take as well. So that's a really good, really nice opportunity for any kids who come to Bangkok um, and are looking to, you know, towards towards that graduation, um, having this flexibility. And again, you know, the word opportunity comes up, you know, having these opportunities available to a variety of, you know, learners. And of course, you know, you know, future graduates. Fantastic. That, that's great. What um, what about, you know, I guess most people would ask, are, are you associated with the embassy at all, the U.S. embassy at all? Like, you know, I, I feel like there's, you know, the tie to that American curriculum. We know that there's a lot of people that are out there and it should as well. Um, is there any close close ties there or no? Well, so we originally started on the U.S. Embassy. So that's where our first campus was in 1952. That's where that's where we started. So naturally, there's a lot of heritage and uh, history there. I, w- I think we have the most, you know, out of the schools in Bangkok, we have the majority of the U.S. Embassy students as well at the school. So, you know, that relationship is strong, of course. Um, so, yes, in a way, yeah, definitely. You know, we, we are close with the U.S. Embassy for sure. Um, and, we, and we're very, you know, fortunate that we uh, we have that. You know, we're very, pr- you know, very proud of that. Um, and along may continue. Fantastic. As uh, you know, final question for you before we move on to your video. What about the transition? You know, like uh, transition support for families that are coming through. Some people come for two years. Some come for four years. Some have probably been with you their entire. I, I actually know the a few people who you know went through ISB their you know for their entire career until they they went off to college from you know, you know early years on and so mm-hmm. what kind of transition support do you offer to families that are coming into Bangkok yeah so again this would slightly depend on what uh, grade level the kids are going into um but like, I would say the first sort of part of that transition would be admissions of course right so we're the ones who sort of you know well, a lot of a lot of decisions are made based on where the kids go to school and so us as a team, you know, we support families through through that decision and through that process. And eventually kids, uh, families would have what we call an intake appointment, which is with a guidance counselor. We have counselors throughout the school. There's uh, three in elementary school, two in middle school, and three in the high school. And so their job is to ensure that kids are placed into the, in elementary school, into the right homeroom with the right teacher. So we ask questions about like, you know, you for your elementary school child, like, you know, are they better with a more structured teacher or a more supportive teacher? Or are they better with a male or a female teacher? Are they more suited to a smaller classroom or a team talk classroom, which is double the size? You know, are they, what are their social skills like? What are, how are they, uh, what are they used to from previous school? So we try to sort of match kids to a classroom and a teacher in the elementary school level. And then middle school and high school, we have a student ambassador program. So similar to like a, a buddy let's say. And so these are kids that have usually been at the school for longer. We try to get kids that live here, you know, close to the campus and also who live downtown. We try to get students who are from different parts of the world. And so we match a student ambassador to a new student. And that's sort of like their first friend. And this student would walk a new student to class, pick them up, tell them, you know, which, you know, which, which is their favorite food, introduce them to other kids, introduce them to teachers, show them all the shortcuts things like that. And sometimes these friendships last a lifetime. Sometimes after a few days, you know, after the kids have been, you know, are shown around, like, you know, what? I, you know, I've made a bigger connection here. Um, so, you know, thank, thank you. Uh, and, and see you in the hallway. Um, so we've got, we've got those. So I would say, and for the parents as well, um, we do have sort of community groups, you know, so if parents want to get connected with their, with their community or something else like we've got you know there's a pta of course you know that's here there's other parent organizations so it's really um once you join the isb sort of community you become part of the family and you know families are here to to support each other right so that's sort of that that's part of the process um definitely like i I, as a kid who moved around a lot uh to different schools what what we do here i would have loved to have had at some of the previous (laughs) I went to. Um, it really is a very warm welcome. It's like a nice warm hug 
let's put it that way, I would say for, for the kids. And because the, the ambassadors are from different parts of the world, it's something familiar, which always helps, right? Like the first and foremost, we want kids to feel safe and comfortable in a new environment. So, you know, having that little, you know, like reminder of home or that comfort from home, that always helps. So we put a lot of effort into that transition um, for, for the kids and for the parents alike. On that note, it's time to transition to your video presentation. But thank you very much, Mr. David. Appreciate it. And thank you for taking time out in your morning today to speak with us. Have a great one. For sure. Thank you, Stephen. Take care. Enjoy the video. Welcome to International School, Bangkok. Or as we like to call it, ISB. Hello! Hello! <laughs> Welcome. Our school was founded in 1951. It is the oldest international school in Thailand and one of the best international schools in the world. This is because learning is at the heart of our school and everything is done to improve our learning, to challenge and support us, and to ignite our passions. ISB is located inside a beautiful international community, just outside the heart of the city. The housing in the community is fantastic. There are executive staff homes, townhouses, high-rise apartments with lived use and more. You'll want to stay here forever. The majority of ISB families live in the community that surrounds our campus, which makes it possible for us to walk or ride our bikes to school. For those of us that live downtown, we use the school's bus service, which gives kids all around Bangkok the chance to ride to and from ISB comfortably and safely. This 37-acre campus is amazing. That's 15 hectares. That's 150,000 square meters. It's a very big campus. I grab her by the throat and teach her a lesson she wouldn't forget. Oh, no, no. Our performing arts, athletics, and academic facilities are among the very best in Asia. favorite facilities is our cultural center, which is a cutting-edge, energy-efficient five-story building, which houses a 280-seat theater, dance rooms, band rooms, choral rooms, and more. In fact, the Culture Center is the first building in Thailand to have earned the LEED Goal Certificate awarded by the U.S. Green Building Council. We also have a 700 seat theater, two swimming pools, indoor and outdoor gymnasiums, a great fitness center, tennis courts, two awesome libraries, 
and an all-weather track that is the absolute best in the country. I have been to a lot of international schools and I have to say that the investment that ISB has made in technology and resources is totally amazing. ISB values well-rounded students from academics to sports to performing arts. ISB has got you covered. What did we observe happening? What else was there that's not showing that reaction? There was a gap for sure, ISB offers the International Baccalaureate Diploma Program, which is an advanced college preparation program that is recognized all around the world. Year after year, our IB Diploma students receive passes that are way above the world's average. Students who earn the IB Diploma have a wide range of options for university admissions in the US, Europe, the UK, and Australia. Just about anywhere, really. And every year, ISB students end up going to the best colleges and universities in the world. Today, thousands of ISB alumni are contributing to a better world in all corners of the globe. These teachers are amazing. They truly care about us. And if you had a nice breakfast, we have breakfast today. Mm -hmm. We've been waiting for you. We've been waiting for you to come to this place. Waiting for you to come to this place. Wherever you're from, we're glad that you come. We've been waiting for you to come to this place. They inspire us to achieve our academic potential and be the very best that we can be. We are very passionate about learning and are constantly increasing our standing about how we learn best. We are always reflecting, thinking about what we are doing, why we are doing it, and how we can improve. Learning at ISB takes on many forms and includes the importance of each and every one of us becoming caring global citizens. One of the ways in which we accomplish this is by taking part in the many service learning opportunities that we have in the Thai community and the wider world. Whether it be helping disabled children or caring for children at local orphanages or building homes with Habitat for Humanity. We have countless opportunities to develop and grow as caring members of a global society. Our school also offers many fun clubs and after school activities, from gymnastics, to taekwondo, to ballet. ISB truly has something for everyone. And the fun doesn't stop on the weekends. ISB is a place for all sorts of community-based activities, such as Cub Scouts, Girl Scouts, baseball, basketball, soccer, tennis, swimming, and more. At ISB, we are all about being healthy and active. ISB not only provides opportunities for students, but also for our parents. Whether it be volunteering in the classroom or helping sell cool ISB gear at the Booster Hut, or coaching a community sports team. ISB provides a great experience for the whole family. We enjoy going to ISB and experiencing all that it has to offer from the lasting friendships that we make to the activities we do. It's like being part of a big family. We work together we play together, and we have fun together. I feel like I am part of a community here at ISB, because everyone is involved and everyone is helping each other out.
my friends, my teachers. ISB is more than a school. It is an experience that will be with me forever. We are part of a community. We're part of a family. We are part of ISB. Fantastic, and now I actually have the correct names on the screen. That was a wonderful video presentation to start us off with. Harriet and Robert, how are you this morning? Very well, thank you. Thanks for having us. So no, Very well, nice thanks, David. Good to see you again. Nice to see you as well. It's been it's been a while, Robert. Yes, it's yeah. been a while, indeed. Uh, you are here to present or talk to us about education visas at ISB, and so I, I give the floor to you. All right, thank you. All right, let me see if I can do our share screen. Oh. Two seconds. Ooh. Hold on. Entire screen, what do I need to do? Sorry. No worries. Sorry, I wish I knew you'd known you'd have a presentation. I would have had, had you loaded up beforehand. Share screen. But that's good. While you're doing that, I want to remind everybody that we are actually live here. This is a real thing, as you can see. We, even we have technology glitches and, and whatnot. Uh, you know, our presenters would love to hear your questions. They would love to take them. So if you're watching on YouTube, if you're watching on Facebook, uh, you know, put a question in there. Like, what do you want to know about ISB? What do you want to know about this campus? And in this particular presentation, what do you want to know about education visas? And you are off and running. Great. Can you see our screen? Yes, we can. Oh, fantastic. Right. So let's pass over to Rob. Okay. There we go. Thanks. So uh, today we're just going to give a, a bit of an introduction about this um, education visa, which certainly ISB and I think a lot of other schools in Bangkok uh, are, you know, are starting to take more, more notice of uh, as the popularity has really uh, has, has been gaining. Uh, during, um, we think, because of COVID and this sort of phenomenon of being able to work from from anywhere now. Um, and just the agenda, we'll, we'll, we'll go through an introduction. What, what is the education visa? How it's been growing? Where we've been seeing that growth? Looking at a case study of a family uh, that, that, that have um, come to Thailand on the education visa and then just how ISB is, is well placed uh, to serve some of the families that are, that are coming in on this. Um, on this type of visa. Okay. Um, so, so just a bit of an overview. So Thailand uh, welcomes families um, that are looking to uh, to seek education options um, in, in international schools in Thailand. Um, a, a little bit like the healthcare uh, industry in Thailand, um, uh, the, the Thai government, I think, see opportunities uh, to connect um, the international community with, with the quality of uh, of, of, of education here in Thailand. Um, so students can apply for a study visa and then um, one parent can obtain a guardian visa to, to travel with that, with that child um, and, and uh, then can, can actually live, live in Thailand. Uh, the education visa is actually our fastest growing student segment. As I've said, uh, we've, we've seen this growth uh, especially rapid over the last three, three years. And, um, you know, I think ISB is, is, is just very well positioned to, pri uh, to, to provide value um, for an entire family. And I think really just to summarize, you know, Thailand um, offers something quite unique in this region. And, and really it's a, it's a mixture of um, political stability, um, economic opportunity, and you know, a relatively low cost of living. Um, and all of these are, are, are ingredients which, which uh, I, I think are also uh, driving the growth of this, of this option for, for families. Thanks. Um, so just a bit of data on where ISB is, is seeing um, uh, this, this growth and which nationality groups uh, we're seeing this in. So um, as you can see, you know, China and the US uh, account for just under half of of uh, uh, students um, studying on this visa of ISB. We're, we're, we're seeing um, notably uh, an increase from, from, from Myanmar, and I, I think that's probably for those who understand what's happening in the region 
uh, exactly why why that's uh, happening. But but equally, we're seeing you know growth from from markets such as uh, South Korea, where you know pet parents are, are really uh, aspirational um, and looking for for a type uh, of education that, that are really going to um, uh, really going to to sort of underline the value of be, being a global citizen for 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 their kids. Um, you know, and, and, and Thai schools or Thai international schools really really offer. Uh, something quite unique in that respect. Um, thanks. Yeah. So this is just a, an example um, of of you know a family, the Young family, who who um, uh, who who ended up at ISB uh, this this semester. So they they came to Bangkok um, and toured a number of schools. We always encourage families to do that. We know that that all, you know every child is different, and and we're, we're all about finding finding kids that their best fit fit school. Um, and and I think also for those families that are coming in on an education visa, um, they'll also want to use this time to look at some of uh, the housing options um, available in Bangkok, and and that you know finding finding a you know a realtor that has an experience working with families. Uh, for instance, there, 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 there are some, you know, particular needs, such as if you come with a pet or if you have a lot of household goods um, or any other sort of just just quite uh, unique requirements for every family. A good realtor will, will, will be able to, to take all of that into the mix. So this family viewed, viewed some, some homes and, and, and found some homes that, that, they, that they liked near the, near, near the school. Um, which at that point they were thinking of ISB. So they put in an application, they were accepted, and then they made uh, a payment to the school, which then uh, um, allowed the school to generate the, the paperwork that was required to then apply for the education visa. So that's um, an acceptance letter. Um, you do need to get the school uh, signatory ID um, and also uh, the, you know, the trade license of the school. So this is what the the Thai um, embassy or consulate in in the home country will uh, will require. So um, the the Thai embassy, uh, in this case in in Yangon, required all all of this paperwork. So the uh, paperwork was submitted for the guardian and the student visa, and the visas then received. It, it typically it can take from three weeks, sometimes up to a couple of months, depending on each case and, and which country uh, is you know is um, is being applied from. Um, but after the visas are received, arrival in Thailand, and then following that, uh, the visa then would get renewed after ninety days. So what you see here is is really just a, you know it's it's quite a kind of straightforward um, straightforward process. But at ISB, what we look to do is try and handhold the family throughout this this uh, process, um, and because it can, uh, you know, sometimes bureaucracy can can seem a little bit um, intimidating and, and and complicated. But we really try and try and make it as easy as possible. Okay, yeah. so when they've arrived, and I think if you've seen that video that we played just before this, I think I hope well, hopefully that gave you a flavour. Of what happens in and around the school um, but I think a little bit more about our parent community here because as we said it's not just the student applying it's it's the whole family so they need to find somewhere where they feel super welcome and ISB in particular has the right setup for those families maybe they're looking for a, a soft landing if they've if they've moved quite quickly or this is you know, quite a sudden decision, they, they need to have somewhere where they can just put their bags down, start school and then, you know, get on with family life. So where ISB works really well is with our parent community. It's a, it's a ready-made community. There's friends that you just didn't know yet waiting to, to put their arms out and look after you. So there's parent associations, there's a booster club, which... Uh, for those familiar with the US system, this is quite a, a standard thing. For for me and my family, when we arrived a couple of years ago, this was all new to us. And it's it's amazing how parents really support the students and other parents. So the Boosters is all about students. So they help with international travel if there's any athletes moving or cultural exchanges. We They find host families for kids uh, and their families to stay with. So it's a it's a real all-family 
approach. And the PTA has these amazing community groups um, that may be nationality based or a, a region of, of countries based together. So, for example, if one parent doesn't speak great English, that those those community groups will translate important documents and, and offer coffee and, and sometimes wine. And they'll have cultural trips and really help people find their feet and find their friends in the community. And there's an amazing adult education program as well, because again, it's 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 the whole family approach. So adults can they can do Thai lessons or English lessons. They can do anything from ceramics to golf to you, you name it. There, there's there's a, an activity and a class for everybody, and um, lots of yoga and Pilates and things like that as well. Um, and then there's there's a third strand to the parent involvement with. What, what is called the uh, International Professional Network, which is set up by some UN parents who are based uh, out of ISB. And they've created a network of uh, professionals. So if you've landed here and you're looking for work or you're a remote worker and just looking for some professional connections, there's, there's, a, there's a, a group for them. Uh, they've recently done uh, a obsession on personal taxation and personal branding so they, they really think about every aspect of the community and then just a little bit more you saw in the film just some bits of niche in it but I think it's it's worth talking about this this pretty special community uh, that is yes it is a soft landing and it is a bit like a five-star resort sometimes when you've got sort of international clinics a Starbucks you know really lovely restaurants, cafes, uh, you've got everything that you could possibly need in an international supermarket so you get some of the tastes of home if, you, if you're feeling a bit homesick. Um, but what you can also see here on this photo is that it, the real Thailand is, is here and it's right on your doorstep. So you just have to go outside the gate and you can get fresh coconuts or street food or there's craft shops and all sorts of things that you you know you can really help like set yourself up here and it's uh, it's really lovely a, a great base that you can explore the you know Bangkok and the rest rest of Thailand so you know you can be on a beach in two hours at the weekend which is pretty cool uh, you can be downtown so on a Sunday for example you can be downtown um, to go and see maybe the Grand Palace in 30 minutes uh, if you if you go off on a on a weekend and my personal paradise is Chatter Chat Market, which is about 15 minutes on a Sunday. So I can get lost in 15,000 stalls there and <laughs> do a bit of shopping, um, a bit of relaxation. So, you know, the, this is just a, a really great base in which to you know, set yourself up, have kids who are safe and independent, and then as a family, use it to explore the rest of, of Thailand. Great, thanks. And just to summarize, um, uh, just our last slide is really that you know, I, I describe this like a kind of turnkey, um, you know, a turnkey model for for parents looking to to relocate and take take advantage of what of what Thailand has to offer. So uh, you know, we, we we have the education um, as we as we've spoken about. Um, we we have a, a welcoming international community that you can find your your friendship group very very quickly. Um, we, we have, we're very close to Metro Bangkok and we actually have a MRT line, a uh, pink line opening uh, this, this year, um, which is going to bring us ever, ever closer to, to uh, downtown Bangkok. Uh, we, we have a secure and convenient community um, in, in which you know, most of our, our, our students and families live um, and can, you know, can, can uh, you know, with cycle lanes so you can cycle to school and, and uh, security and the like and then um, of, of course uh, we have the, the the affordable and comfortable accommodation uh, which families are going to need um, uh, to, to give them that that sort of hassle-free uh, soft soft landing uh, uh, here uh, in Nichida so it's a really it's it's a it's really a compelling model I think for those for those parents um, looking to to relocate families and um, you know it's no surprise that this is our fastest growing growing segment um, so yeah thank oh, you fantastic so much thank you to both
Thank you to both of you for that presentation. Really appreciate it, Harriet. And I'll oh, look at that. I have us in the wrong spot, but there you go. <laughs> Harriet and Robert, thank you so much for taking time out of your day to explain this education visa and how that is helping families to come to Thailand and in uh, you know, not only join ISB, but the rest of the schools around the area. Have yourself a wonderful morning. Thank you so much. Thanks. Cheers. Bye. All right, folks. Our next school is KIS International School, which is centrally located in Bangkok, Thailand. It's an IB World School exclusively offering the International Baccalaureate programs. KIS is a collaborative community of about 175 students and 55 nationalities. They enjoy a strong community atmosphere and a variety of pursuits in academics, athletics, arts, and service. Students at KIS can pursue a continuum of IB education right from the start through the following programs. The IB Primary Years Program for ages 3 to 11, the IB Middle Years Program for ages 11 to 16, and the IB Diploma Program for ages 16 to 19. KS's dedicated teachers and supportive parents work in partnership toward the attainment of student success. The school offers an academically challenging international curriculum and a well-rounded program of sports, creativity, and community service. They provide all of their students from the youngest children stepping into a classroom for the first time to their graduates heading off to the best universities with the tools to become lifelong learners, successful leaders, and responsible global citizens. KIS is recognized as a top quality international school with high academic standards being fully accredited by both the Council of International Schools and the International Baccalaureate. And now, without further ado, I'm going to give you Kayleen. Hi, Hello, how are you today? How are you? Good morning. I, you know, I just realized, did I butcher your name? Is it Kayleen? It's Kayleen. No, you didn't butcher it. I don't know if you remember what happened last year, so we're already doing better. <laughs> <laughs> You're not supposed to reference anything that happened it's in the past is in the past. Okay? It's good to see you. How are you yes, doing? I am well, thank you. Kaleen, what I have offered to all the other presenters um, yesterday and then obviously starting today is the opportunity to just basically, you know, I just read, you know, your, sort of your standard blurb about what KS is, but tell us what, you know, in your words, what's it mean sure. to be a KS? What's that? What's the heart of KS? Yeah, um, well, I think it's important to share that um, I'm also a mother of two students at KIS, and that always brings a lot of personal context and understanding of what the curriculum looks like. Um, I think that uh, KIS is the only school in Bangkok that offers all four IB programs, which is a really exciting place to be. Uh, we've always been a full IB school. But the recent addition of the career related program has given more options to university pathways. So I think that um, the same way the IB organization created this program in 2014 with an understanding that students are different, the world is changing, the world is evolving, colleges are evolving, how can we provide more of a diverse offering to students. Um, KIS is the first school that's adopted all four of the IB programs. So that's a really exciting place. Um, we'll be having an art exhibit at the BACC soon for those of the audience members that are in Bangkok. So they'll get to see some really amazing design technology pieces that our 16, 17 year olds build. Um, mm -hmm. I'm always really impressed with what students um, are producing and the work that they're doing. I think KIS is a, a unique school because we're, we're smaller than some of the bigger schools. We're just at around 800 kids. And with that comes a really nice community feeling. Um, you know, you have the, the five-year-olds waving at the, the 12th graders as they walk through on their way to the indoor auditorium, if that's where they need to be having some sort of an activity. Um, we have a lot of kids that, that are, are locals that start at age three and go all the way through graduation. We have an extremely engaged and active parent association. Um, and so I think that the, the community feel is something that before I joined KIS two years ago, it was what I had read about online in reviews. Mm -hmm. It was kind of what reassured me to take that leap with my family. Um, it was a little bit like everything um, slower to come back with the pandemic. But this year, it's just been amazing to see everybody re-engaging. Our students have been traveling for the Marissa Conference. That's a, a sports association for the Mekong River Valley. So our kids have been going to Vietnam uh, to compete or to Cambodia. And it's exciting to see um, that community feel really come back to life in a way that I know we were all a little bit starved for. Um, 
Another thing I've noticed about KIS is parent education is really big for us. I think a lot of people ask questions about like the IB curriculum. Uh, this is my first IB school. And I think when you just read the language, it can be a bit overwhelming, um, sometimes a bit too technical. And and you just, as a parent, I just, what, what does that mean? What I want to understand what you're what you're talking about. And I've been really pleased that my seventh and ninth grader have been doing very, very well. Um, they receive a lot of support, a lot of individual attention, uh, and that inevitably yields success. But as a parent, I was intimidated by all these things that I was reading. And now that I'm there, I realize that, you know, it's not very different than um, what a project-based learning school says about their curriculum or what a interdisciplinary school value or curriculum um, appreciates so that students are learning through various different lenses with a lot of group work, um, also individual opportunities. And I think all of that continues to further that notion of a, of a community school. Um, Fantastic. But I could probably, yeah, I could probably keep talking forever and I don't have forever. So I don't know if we <laughs> should open actually, up questions. We have a question from a, a woman named Katia Rizzello. Uh, can you tell us more about the CP program and exactly what it is and how it works, please? Yeah, that's a great question. So the CP program is a dual enrollment program. So in grade 10, students are, um, they sit with their counselors and they talk about what is it that you want to do in the future? You know, what is it that you want to do when you go to college? Where do you want to go to college? What do you want to study? The career related program is a dual enrollment program where students are, are enrolled both at KIS and a university that's going to be related to what is that career kind of focus that they have. So it's more um, designed for students who have a strong understanding of what they want to do in our case specifically, we have a partnership with uh, SUMAS, which is a Swiss business and sustainability management university in, in Switzerland, as well as SCAD, which is the Savannah College of Art and Design. Um, and so our students get to have a much more kind of curated specific curriculum that's furthering their career goals. Mm. Um, so if there's a student who's really passionate about design, um, and art, and they know that they want to be an industrial designer. They can be taking college level courses in addition to DP courses, um, as well as doing internships and getting other firsthand experience to be able to, when they get to college, have a much more robust portfolio, as well as a lot more specific classes. Um, it also enables students to not have to take certain classes that they're not really strong at. You know, like I just, I'm, I'm really not good at, I don't know, science, and this really has nothing to do with what I want to do in the future. You're going to get to kind of tailor your academic experience in those last two years and better prepare yourself for, for university. Um, there are also other tracks that we can align. These are the ones that we, because it's a, it's a new program, so we only have been doing this now. Um, this is our first year where we're going to be having students, and we haven't yet had graduates from this program because it's a two-year program. Um, but we, there are also options with aeronautical engineering where you can have a partnership with Embry-Riddle or sports management is another track. Um, so there are a lot of options. They are more specific. So IBDP still is a broader um, course of study. We also have a courses option. So you don't have to do the DP program. And then now we have CP. So really at KIS, now we have three university tracks. We've amped up our counseling program um, as well as parent education. And so I think really it's about finding the right fit for mm. both the family and for the student. And it's really nice to be in that position to be able to offer that. Um, to our, yeah, mm -hmm. to our student population. On riffing off of the diversity uh, piece, tell me about the student body. Um, what, what sort of internationality do you have and what, what's your student body look like? Yeah, I mean, broad strokes, we're about 50% local, 50% international. Within that 50% international, it covers over 50 nationalities. Um, it's interesting to see how each grade can change a lot. I was actually just before this looking at numbers. Our 2023 graduating class is actually 44% Thai, 25% Indian, 4% um, British, 7% American, and then there's a mixture of the 18 others. So that's a really kind of unique group. And every year it kind of shifts a little bit. Um, and we do see that that kind of changes over the course, depending on many different circumstances. 
Um, but that's that's kind of our threshold is what we try to not exceed the 50 percent local nut just because we want to provide that international global sure. perspective that is really a lived experience. Fantastic. One final question for you. Um, for the diploma years, what are the, what are the class sizes, um, you know, sort of student teacher teacher ratio? They can sometimes they can be really small. I mean, I've seen like a seven person class, but the max is going to be about 20. It's never oh. going to exceed that. Um, and it will probably average at around the 12 to 15 mark. Um, I think the DP students get a lot of individual attention, a lot of autonomy. Um, and so you'll see students on their own in the art studio if they're taking the DP visual arts class uh, in small group discussions for a theory of knowledge. But it's never going to exceed. I think officially our number is 23, but I, I don't think I, you don't see that at that level because it really is quite rigorous and, and they do keep the class size small. Well, excellent. Well, I think it is time to move on to your video presentation for KIS, and then we have your colleague coming on afterwards. But um, thank you so much for taking time out of your day today. What wonderful presentation. Thank you. Q&A this year, and uh, we'll see you again soon. Good to see you. Take care. Welcome to KIS International School. We are a thriving early years to grade 12 full IB World School located in the heart of Bangkok with more than 750 students representing over 52 nationalities. KIS was founded in 1998 as a primary school with just one building. Since then we have grown to integrate all age groups and offer a challenging curriculum. We are proud to be the only school in Bangkok to offer all four IB programs. The Primary Years Program, Middle Years Program, IB Diploma Program, and most recently, the Career Related Program. The Early Years are a magical time in a child's life. And at KIS, that means starting with a personalized and balanced approach to learning with one teacher for every eight students, developing critical thinking and problem-solving skills that help students excel across all disciplines. This instills a sense of curiosity and wonder through play, equipping all students with the tools to become lifelong learners and leaders. Yeah. Our lush campus is spread out over more than 25,000 square meters. featuring well-equipped facilities including science labs, state-of-the-art design workshops, studios for art and drama, an auditorium, and an acoustically designed Audi box. Our sporting facilities are home to various teams including football, swimming, basketball, volleyball, and more. KIS is a warm and tightly knit community, and here individuals feel at home in our vibrant and dynamic school. Whether your child is just starting their schooling or nearing graduation, KIS offers a challenging and well-rounded program that will serve them well wherever life takes them. Come, discover how KIS is inspiring individuals. Wonderful, and turn my camera back on. Uh, great presentation there.
and now here's my 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 friendly teammates that they never you know they didn't exactly tell me how to pronounce your name so is it G yeah, yeah exactly uh my good morning uh my name is Kai Kai um, yeah Fantastic. like egg in Thai actually as it turns out um there you go so uh, I'm American my husband is Belgian and here we are in Thailand Fantastic, Kai. It's so nice to meet you and welcome. So glad to have you here to talk to us about educating the whole child. Um, do you have a presentation that you're going to share? Or would you like to just... No, not today. Not today. Fantastic. All right. Excellent. So tell us, what does it mean to educate the whole child? Yeah. So uh, first off, uh, as you can see, I'm the primary school principal. This is my first year as principal at KIS. And uh, similar to what Colleen had to share, uh, I moved here not only as a, uh, not only for my personal, uh, professional aspirations, but also I moved here as a mom. Um, I'm the mother of, of three children and my husband is an educator as well. And so when we made the move, and I would say the leap to, to join a, a community in Bangkok, we really were um, thinking about what we needed in terms of professional goals, but also uh, family goals and what we were looking for for the education of our own children. So similar to Colleen, I was looking for a school that would be that would feel good personally, but also be a wonderful place for my children to learn, grow, and, and ultimately thrive. Um, and I would say, first year in, we are now in the month of March, my children are happy. They have their friends, they feel challenged, they feel supported, and really, um, they're feeling engaged, and they're really quite engaged in terms of uh, involvement in the community. And I believe as mom, uh, we are educating the whole child. Now, as principal, that is our, um, I suppose, our responsibility, our goal, our aim is to ensure every child feel ch feels challenged and supported. Um, and there are lots of different ways we, we achieve that. I think first and foremost, uh, one thing Colleen talked about and actually absolutely ran, uh, excuse me, was a strong message in the video, is that we are a community-oriented school, meaning we have a very robust parent association called KISPA, K-I-S, Parent Association, uh, who is very committed to supporting uh, community events. We have Songkran Celebration coming up next month, and we are planning that with the Thai department, with KISPA, and involving students as well in terms of preparing for that event. We also had a big Chinese New Year celebration, um, a big, uh, excuse me, um, other celebrations over the course of the year, even a, a Christmas celebration. Okay. Um, and also one thing that we've done is we've looked at uh, our counseling model. If we think about educating the whole child, there are different needs that come up in a child's life over the years. And um, we were committed as a school to providing a, a comprehensive counseling model, providing support for our youngest learners all the way up to through the DPNCP where children are creating, uh, choosing pathways for their future. And um, so our counselors are not only working with the children themselves, one-on-one, -on -one, in small groups, and in, in whole group lessons, but they're also really engaged with involving the parent community. That's something Colleen mentioned, is we have had a number of parent workshops this year, one even just yesterday, um, one just yesterday with a, led by our counselor, Amanda, who was uh, leading a book club, and that would be our second parent book club of the year. And actually, we, we have had a second parent book club because the first was so successful and so popular. And I say that, and I use so successful, uh, use those words because I have worked in uh, a number of other IB schools around the globe, and the involvement engagement with the parent community here is quite unique. Um, the the first round of uh, parent book club, uh, we, we were looking at the positive discipline a parent a positive discipline parenting book, um, and after that parenting book club finished, after about six sessions. The parents actually said, you know, we'd like to have a session where more parents can learn the key messages from this book. And we think it would be important if parents were able to speak and communicate about the challenges they face in their home language. And so we actually, this was parent driven. And we had a session of about, I want to say it was about 60 parents who came to talk about different challenges and successes with parenting. And we, we spoke in different mother tongues, in English, in Hindi, in, in Thai, in Chinese in German, in Spanish, et cetera. And so people were really able to express themselves and communicate about the challenges, the joys, the successes. And I say that's part of educating the whole child because at KIS, we have a very strong partnership with parents. When we're talking about educating the whole child, it's not just the, the teacher's responsibility. It's not just the parent's responsibility. We work in partnership to ensure each child feels um, 
feels like they belong and feels like they're significant and that they're challenged academically. <laughs> um, what else can I say? I can say that um, principal, we are really excited about curriculum. Really excited about our curriculum. We have a very engaging, dynamic curriculum that is IB based. Um, I know that that's something that makes us unique as an IB school in Bangkok. In that, we are developing critical thinking skills. We are helping the children de uh, develop uh, global citizenship, and we are helping them become responsible for their own learning. One thing we talk about is having uh, agency in our learning, meaning children, even from a young age of EY1, our EY1 students are three and four years old, they have voice and choice in what they're learning. Um, if I'm thinking actually about our EY2 classroom, if you walk in, it's actually a very beautiful space with a creation area, an imagination area, uh, a discovery area. And in one of those zones, in one of those areas, they actually have a, a, a budding forest. So it, it turns out that children were interested in learning about the animals in our environment. And so to learn about that and to engage in this learning opportunity, they built a forest and they're still building this forest um, and looking at what animals live there, how you take care of the animals, what's it like in this, in this environment. They have a little tent that children like to go into that space and they read in there, um, et cetera. Uh, so. Fantastic. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah, no, that, that was a that was a wonderful overview of how you know KIS educates the whole child. Is there anything that you'd like to tie it in a bow? Is there you know something that maybe you're seeing for the you know through the end of the school year or for next year that you're particularly excited about? Yeah. So um, I, one thing that Colleen mentioned before was how we're this year our focus really was on uh, reengaging the community. So um, one thing that we we've done is we've uh, re relaunched our residential trips. And so for me as an IB educator, this is something I've experienced in other schools having these overnight excursions somewhere else. Mm -hmm. Some schools will do this, not every school will. I would say KIS does this really well, going to really cool destinations starting in grade three uh, on overnight trips. So we've relaunched that this year and uh, we've had a number of day trips as well. And the day trips would be going to, uh, we have our EY1 group going to the Butterfly Garden uh, mm -hmm. in the near future. Um, we have the grade two, uh, sorry, EY2 group going to one of the recycling places uh, in the in nearby where they're turning plastic in using actually bottle caps, turning bottle caps into reusable plastic and little, little plastic pellets. Um, and so we're looking at how we can engage in our local community, have really meaningful field trips, some overnight, some just day trips, to, to bring the learning to life and to make those um, make those connections to what's happening in the real world and, and our curriculum. And I would say something that we're looking forward to in the, in the coming year is we are, um, as I say, when it comes to our curriculum, yes, we, we use an IB framework, but we are always reflecting on, on the program of inquiry, looking at what, are, what is strong, what can be enhanced. And all of our teachers now are engaged in a, what we call a program of inquiry review, meaning we're looking critically at all of our, our units of inquiry, having six units of inquiry um, in grades one to grade five over the course of the year. In EY, we have four units of inquiry, but we're looking critically at, you know, what, is, what are the children learning at each grade level and how are they building on that conceptual understanding year on year? And so we're in, we're in an in-depth in review right now, and we're excited next year to really um, take that learning further and connecting that to our, our statement of quality learning, which means um, we're really ensuring high quality, engaging, rigorous education for our children. And again, putting my mom hat on, uh, you know, I ask my kids, you know, how do you feel at KS? We've been here a number of months and they say, mom, you know, I feel like my teachers really push me to think harder. They push me to, to really dig deep in my understanding. They're, they challenge me, but they also support me. And this is a conversation I had recently with my kids. So I, I'd say as principal, that's something I really strive to do is make sure there's that rigor for all. Um, and I would say, if you, if you come and you just observe for a moment, you'll see that joy and that happiness on the playground. You'll see that caring and kindness um, between the children um, as, you, as you peek into the classrooms. And I'd say our, our mission, uh, excuse me, our vision of, of inspiring individuals, that's really at the core of what we do in, in all, all aspects of the day for the, for the children. Super cool, Kai. Thank you so much for putting that on the table for us, for uh, talking about how you educate the whole child. And we're 
really excited for you to be with us today. Thank you so much for taking the time out. Thank you. Thank you so much. And so we're going to wrap up with chaos, but the way we're going to wrap up is one of these really cool promotions in that, you know, they're extending for anybody who's registered for the summit here with us. And, you know, I got to, I got to say there's over 1200 people registered in the summit right now. Um, they're, they're giving 50% off the chaos registration fee for anybody who has registered for the summit. And, you know, all you have to do is send them an email or give them a call and tell them that you came through the summit and they will honor this agreement. But now it is time to move on to our next school, which is KPIS International School. KPIS International School is a nursery to grade 12 school in Bangkok for 2 to 18 years old and has the AP Capstone Diploma. At KPIS, they believe in an American education system based on the Common Core state standards. The essence of learning at KPIS is focused on three main things. First, knowledge, which includes content and having the insight in knowing what, how, when to access that information. Skills to apply this knowledge to the real world. These transformative skills create resilience and adaptability and attitudes such as empathy and kindness and ultimately how to become a global citizen of the future world. Through project-based learning, design thinking processes, and real-world experiences, KPIS provides unique learning experiences that are appropriate and aligned with chi child developmental stages. And now my next guest is Mr. Ben Edmonds. Hello, Ben. How are you today? Hi. Good morning. Can you hear me okay? I can hear you just fine. Right. Yes. Thank you for taking time out of your morning today to talk to about, uh, us about KPIS. As I've offered to the other presenters um, of the other schools yesterday and, and today, I'd love for you to start out with, you know, in your, in your words, you know, what's it mean to be at KPIS? What, you know, what's the heart of the school and what do you take away every day? Uh, I mean, the key thing that we take away every day is is community. We're not that large a school, but we're not that small, if you get what I mean. So we're 560 students from nursery through to grade 12, and the campus is quite compact. So which means that you go through a day, and my, in my own role uh, in the school, I, I see children and staff from all aspects of areas of the school. So when I personally walk away, it's a sense of knowing pretty much everybody here within the, within the community. And, and as such, you know, you that sort of flows over into in aspects of schooling and education and, and how we build that in terms of connection with parents and, and with teachers and students and what have you. So for me, and, and just recently, we just had our WASP come in visit um, just yesterday and the day before, and we, you know, the feedback coming from some of the parents, there was very much that being, you've got somebody that you can talk to and communicate with about any questions you might have or just updates on, on your child's learning. Um, and certainly, you know, in, in the extreme cases, when there's, when there's help and support needed, you know where you can go to somebody for, for that support in kind. So one of the things that I, I found interesting talking with some of the other schools yesterday is, is hearing about that parent interaction. Do you have parents come to the campus? Do you have are, are parents a lot, you know, come in? Do they have lunch with their kids? Do they, you know, pick them up? Uh, you know, like what's that? Is the interaction holistic or is it sort of, hey, you know, kids are at school and then they come home or, or not? What not? Well, thankfully, COVID went away and um, we were allowed to open uh, up our campus more. And particularly this year, you know, activities and, and events that have invited parents on site um, have increased. Um, and for example, uh, I think in a couple of weeks time, we have a university fair happening where parents will come with our secondary students and meet with our representatives from university. So that's one example. Uh, we have student um, led conferences coming up as well and parent teacher conferences, which obviously bring uh, parents in. And recently, we've had events where t uh, parents can come in and talk with the executive team, meet, have coffee mornings and things like that, and be very much involved. And, and the best thing was we were allowed to sort of get back in, in our auditorium and see the events and, and shows and, and that students have at the end of the year and, and also at the end of any sort of projects they may be working on. So it's it's increasing. Um, and it's actually, you know, it's a challenge for us as, as, as administrators in the school, how you get all these working logistically, working in and in, in and out. And, you know, a pick up and drop off is, is very much interactive with parents coming in. I mean, due to our size, it's, it's not a stop and chat type thing, unfortunately, but you are there meeting with the same parents every day. So you build that sense of connection, which is great. And as I referred back to at the beginning, you know, my own sort of feeling is that parents can come and sort of meet with me and be like, oh, you know, I know you, I see you every day. The, the idea of being present is so important. Uh, in, in education, I mean, in, in life and relationships anyway, but in education particularly, because that's what they're entrusting us with, right, is their their child and their investment in, in their child's education. So it's it's continued. And along with that is the communication channels that we've uh, we use is 
has increased over time. I would say sort of one of the benefits, if you like, of, of the last few years when face-to-face -face interaction was reduced was that we had to look at then more at the uh, platforms and channels available to uh, facilitate effective communication, which is a key aspect of, of our ESLAs here, effective communicators. We help to build that within our community. And as adults and as educators and as parents, I'm both, <laughs> um, it's important that we are modeling that with our with our children too, right? So we, we have very much um, improved in terms of, we, I mean, we use different platforms for regular communication going home at all divisions. So we have a nursery and kindergarten, and we have elementary and then the secondary. And that engages them to have different things going on at different times. So we've seen actually involvement and engagement from our parents coming back onto campus increase. Mm. Before, before COVID, uh, it's always a challenge to get maybe secondary parents in because as Developmentally, children become more independent as they go into middle and high school, but more and more it, it's getting increasing because we're inviting and we're engaging that dialogue and showing the importance of the parental role in their child's education. Fantastic. Um, there's a, a bit of a back and forth going on in the chat right now that I'd love for you to put here on the video as well. Uh, one of our questions was uh, about asking uh, what is the starting age at KPIS and what is the language in the early years? Is it only English or do you offer other languages as well as the primary language of teaching? So the starting age is two. Uh, we start in nursery um, and then we go through pre-K to kindergarten. That's all one self-contained uh, building. Uh, and they, they're with a creative curriculum and then they move on to Common Core in, in kindergarten. The language of instruction is English, uh, of, of course. Uh, they do have some Chinese classes in kindergarten and then there's Thai classes as well for the pre-K upwards uh, for students so they get the, the mother tongue for many of them, but not always. Uh, some are, are of international based, so they, they learn it as a second language there. Um, but the, the language of instruction is, is English um, and by the time they leave, you know, kindergarten and heading into grade one, they are very much chattering away as, you know, confidently in, in that language uh, while not forgetting their own, you know, language they may use at home, you know, their, their L1 uh, as it would be. Fantastic. Talk to me then about, you know, as a smaller campus diversity around what's the student body look like and, you know, what's the, what sort of nationalities is it composed of? Um, are you yeah, I mean, predominantly, are you predominantly we are Thai. I mean, Thai, Thai families are here, but there's also Thai and uh, mixed families, if you like, um, where they, but, but myself included, my children are Thai British and they're in, in the school. Uh, and we have students from the Philippines, uh, from India, uh, from Korea, uh, from, and Chinese students as well. So it's mostly uh, of Asian background. And we have some American students who are of our teaching staff and faculty staff too. But predominantly is, is, is Thai. Uh, and as such, you know, the school is geared towards dealing with that in terms of the approach to EAL and understanding the cross-cultural awareness of those coming in about you're dealing with a Thai community and a local community. Most of our students here are from a relatively localized area. They're not traveling so much from, from, from downtown. Uh, and so we, you have to hold that in your awareness when you're building your instruction with them and your relationship with them. And also understanding with the parents where the parents are coming from. You know, because sometimes you might have parents who don't necessarily speak English at the level to effectively communicate, if you like, particularly when you're talking about educational aspects or social emotional learning and development, things like that. And so it's important that we bear that in mind in as we help the children to develop and grow. And like I said, um, by the time you get to sort of even the end of kindergarten into, into elementary, um, you wouldn't know they were Thai by listening to them. It's a very sounding American standard SAE sort of sounding <laughs> accent going on there, um, which is which is which is good. I mean, that's a testament to their confidence and ability to as children, of course, to to pick up the language and, and the skills that go along with language development, that's confidence, which is, you know, interpersonal skills there. Mm. Take me to the other end of the school or the other other side of the, the, sure. of the coin, so to speak. What about diversity of extracurricular activities, sports, uh, sports options, um, science and, you know, kind of diving deeper with the, with um, robotics and those kinds of things. What types of activities are available at, at KPIS? Uh, well, we, aside from we have a now we have a relatively large um, after school um, ASA program uh, clubs and, and for activity for students from nursery through to or from pre-K sorry through to uh, secondary and that involves much of what you've spoken about things to do with um, robotics and then you have other things to do with chess and board games um, and of course sports sports are naturally there with um, you know football and, and, and basketball swimming and, and volleyball and badminton. We take part in, in the ISA um, uh, inter-school competitions. 
And so we have inter-school competitions that go on and we build up teams from under 11s and up. So under 11, under 13, under 15 and then open. So from that side, we have that. Um, regarding robotics, yes, I mean, robotics and coding particularly have been uh, integrated into our curriculum anyway. And so we have clubs that extend from that and activities that extend from that as well, challenges that may take place. Um, and then in terms of after school or extracurricular, we have students in the secondary who actually, I think this weekend are going off to do oh, the, following week, World, the World Scholars, which is a debate competition. And so it's a wide variety. I think uh, we've no, I think I know that we have developed that particularly, and it's been a great comeback since um, since COVID, because COVID obviously very much limited that. Um, but being back on site has enabled so much of of that for us in the school. So logistically, um, uh, you know, it's interesting. Um, but it's but the main thing is that the students walk away with options, um, and the families have options as well to choose and help the children choose to develop things they may not ordinarily have a um, you know experience with or experience or exposure to in their everyday life. Mm. Well, on that uh, final question for you, before we run into your video here, what are, you know, what are you looking forward to in both the, as the school year closes out this year and then into next year? Are there new programs you're bringing on board? Uh, are you continuing to expand the campus uh, or the, the student body? Like, what are you looking forward to? Well, for one thing, we're expanding the student body. Yes, we will go from 560 approximately right now to about 600. Mm -hmm. uh, we've got increases in the early years in the kindergarten and also in the lower elementary. So that's um, that's exciting, um, you know, to apart from anything, the energy of very young children coming to school is is huge, it's a, it's a great bonus. Uh, and we're continuing to develop in, in the areas of uh, project-based learning, um, experiential learning and, and, and uh, design thinking uh, in throughout elementary through to uh, secondary. Uh, and continuing with, with, as you talked about earlier, in community engagement. Mm. Uh, and that's something that's developing and increasing over time. And we're looking forward to more and more uh, impactful events with the community. This morning, I was out with our grade four students at a local Thai school where they went as part of their uh, PBL experience. Uh, they were teaching English to local students who don't have the opportunity wow. necessarily to do that. So that's an example of kind of what things can happen. And that's a lot been going on. So that's what sort of thing. Um, but we want you know that will increase. And as we gain confidence in that, the students gain confidence too, right? So. And that sort of has a, the impact of just pushing it through forward and, and seeing how important it is that as a community, you know, you're you're engaged together because alone we can't do it. You know, the village raises the child, as it were. It's 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 very much important. So I'm excited for that uh, and moving onwards and upwards with all of those things. Fantastic. Mr. Ben, thank you so much for taking time out of your morning to speak with us today. We have the video for KPS then, and then we're going to talk about KPS kindergarten afterwards. So um, well, here, we'll go on to this video right now. Thank you. Thank you. Knowledge plus insight is strength. KPIS provides unique learning experiences that build skills for the ever-changing world. With today's technologies developing faster than ever, the skill sets needed for future careers are also transforming. We believe education must adapt to the new world. To ready our students to deal with many challenges the future may bring, we provide a learning environment that students will not only learn, but practice skills that prepare them for their future, such as effective communication, critical thinking, problem solving, lifelong learning, independent thinking, collaboration, creativity, computational thinking, and global thinking. With this fail-safe culture and environment, students will be able to stay curious and develop the much needed future competencies. as we take you through the learning approaches of our school. I like to read in the learning center downstairs. Why do you like it? Because they have a lot of books. I like to play the house game. Here in kindergarten, we believe in creating a love of learning for every student in the early years. Using the principles of creative curriculum combined with the pockets of play and adaptable learning centers and technology centers, we provide an environment that nurtures young minds.
My favorite subject is LA Social Studies and Science because a lot like projects have been going on in social studies and we are also doing the science fair. My favorite activity is uh, language arts. Now we get to write letters to other uh, American grade 2 students and how we are learning in class. A lot of people do say that, like that math is very hard, but once you get used to it, it's actually pretty fun. My teacher likes to put math stations. She'll put like these pieces of paper in different parts of the room and we will just rotate until everyone has done each part. In elementary, our goal is to create a strong foundation for students to gain confidence in their abilities, to excel in their education and to grow individually. Through project-based learning, we develop independent critical thinkers who communicate their ideas effectively within a collaborative environment. We also equip students with social emotional skills to be successful independent global citizens with strong moral values and a resilient work ethic. So I'm in an elective called game design. Game design helped me understand games better. My favorite subject is music. You can play instruments, you can sing, you can dance. What the onion is a speech and debate club. I really like doing debates because it gives you a chance to think about other people's opinions. What do you want to be when you grow up? Uh, that's a hard question. I don't really have any. Yeah. You're still exploring? Yeah, yeah, I guess yeah. Still like, we used to wear in high school. <laughs> <laughs> Middle school is a time for exploration and various learning experiences. At KPIS, we offer programs that help to build and grow transferable skills in a safe and supporting learning environment. Students are able to discover their passions and gain experience as they reflect on their process and their academic and social progress. I applied to the University of York to study chemistry and the reason that I chose this subject, the teachers guided me through um, our career counseling sessions and I was also very motivated to go into something that would lead me to environmental job opportunities. Thanks to the encouragement of my peers and mostly the teachers, I felt really comfortable in really exploring my limits as a student or my boundaries and even trying to cross them to you know expand those boundaries. High school is a time for the direct application of transferable skills. Students are able to reflect on their past experiences to improve and to grow for their future success. Students are able to sharpen their skills as they prepare to be leaders and global citizens. At KPIS, we offer subjects in accounting, statistics, physics, chemistry, biology, environmental sciences, psychology and economics, language, literature and acquisition, visual and performing arts, and the AP Capstone Diploma, which includes AP Seminar and AP Research. At KPIS, we understand the importance of the holistic development of our students through these experiences as they work towards future success. Welcome to KPIS Experience Center, where our main goal is to take learning experiences beyond the school. After students have learned basics from each of their classes, they will be able to explore, experiment, and bring their ideas to life in a fail-safe environment 
through project-based learning in fields that interest them, ranging from multimedia, culinary arts, engineering, performing arts, fashion, design and technology, and so many more. At the Experience Center, we focus on using design thinking process as our main learning approach. These steps include to emphasize or research users' needs, to define or state users' needs and problems, to ideate to challenge assumptions and create ideas, prototype to start to create solutions, test to try the solutions out, and to reflect to make sure that students understood the process. These learning approaches are adapted from each and every level at school, from kindergarten to high school. We guide our students to create projects that they can use in the real world. Within these projects, we also collaborate with corporations and businesses in the real world, where our students gain real-world experiences in return. For example, the F1 in school. In F1 in schools, our main objective is to change the perception of science, technology, engineering, and math by creating a fun and exciting learning environment for students to help them be inspired to develop an informed view in careers in engineering, Formula One, science, marketing, and technology. Here at the Multimedia Studio, we let the student lead the class. Uh, we do what they're interested in, whether it's going to be a music video, a cooking video, or maybe their personal log. We here just giving them guidance and the experience that they need so that they can find out who they are, what they're passionate about, and help guide them into the career they love. Together, we look forward to creating wholesome experiences for all of our children. We do understand that each child is unique, therefore we would create unique learning experience for each of them. Therefore, we believe we can help our students prepare for any challenge that the future may bring. Okay, fantastic. And next, I have to tell you about the promotion that KPIS is running right now. Here, again, exclusive for people who are in the summit and who have signed up and registered for the summit. Um, they are offering an enrollment fee waiver of 100,000 baht. Um, you'll see there that it, it does expire on May 31st. So for those people who are listening today, this is something that you want to take action on right now. And um, if you are watching the recording of this later, uh, hopefully you'll see it before May 31st to be able to take action on it, but then contact KPIS International School uh, directly in order to do that. We actually, you know, I, I want to give a shout out here to KPIS because they actually um, wanted to participate in the summit on two levels. So we heard from Mr. Ben uh, about KPIS International School, but we also wanted to actually have a very specific focus on a, a second aspect of the school, which is their international kindergarten. And so I want to tell you about the international kindergarten here first, and then we're going to play a short video about that kindergarten as well. At the kindergarten in KPIS International School, Bangkok, they believe in creating a level of learning for every student in these early years. Using the principles of the creative curriculum combined with their pockets of play and adaptable learning center, they provide an environment that nurtures young minds. Their goal is to provide an up-to-date facility for 21st century learning that nurtures a perfect environment for modern day education, both inside and outside the classroom. Now, without further ado, I will, um, we now have a presentation for KPIS Kindergarten on video. Our goal is to provide 21st century learning experience that nurtures a perfect environment for modern day education, both inside and outside the classroom. Our preschool curriculum is based on the principles of the creative curriculum, which focuses on four main topics that develop students into becoming well-rounded, wholesome individuals. 
With these objectives in mind, combined with the concept that children learn best when they are having fun and engaged, our facility is designed to celebrate the love of learning in everyone. Pockets of play, cognitive development. Play is essential to the learning process of children, and play can come in a variety of forms to create development in many ways. Therefore, our learning environment has pockets of play in every corner with different objectives, with walls for logical thinking, problem solving, understanding nature, exploring each of the five senses, literacy, and so much more. This way, every child gets a new learning experience everywhere they go. Adaptable Learning Centers Social and Emotional Development Students are imaginative and they need a place to express themselves. We provide a space for performances, role-playing activities in our learning centers where they learn about taking responsibility, self-care, building positive relationships with friends. With an adaptive area and open plan, the space lends itself to new activities that not only promote learning about social interaction, but also public awareness. Playground Physical Development Every child is filled with energy waiting to burst into the world. This energy is transformed into active playing and physical activities that spark curiosity. With different forms of equipment to fulfill different physical movement, our playground boosts this energy into good use, from climbing, sliding, and running, to sand play and water play the students will learn to use their body and explore the world around them. Activity area, language development. Culture is essential part of learning here at KPIS. This stems from the learning to speak, to listen, read and write, which they will always practice on our wall play pockets and extends to activities that we post in different areas of the kindergarten. With our open space area for exhibition and functions, we curate fun activities related to world events so that our students are aware, understand, and grow to appreciate all of our cultures. 21st Century Learning Celebration of Learning Finally, modern day learning is about opening up a love of learning and about sparking excitement in young learners. Our classrooms are designed to facilitate these activities that range from fine art skills to technology and games that will inspire the students to learn more about the world around them. Our environment serves to complement the warm culture of our community and our strong school program. Our class sizes, activity areas, and pockets of play are only a few examples of our commitment to KPIS's mission to providing a well-balanced education, one that nurtures our students' growth and development into becoming a global citizen of the future. Okay, and there we have it. Our next school that we'll be presenting is Kids Kingdom International Kindergarten and Kids Kingdom Ramrudi. Established in 2011, Kids Kingdom offers a nurturing and creative environment for children ages 18 months to six years. We opened our second branch in 2017, Kids Kingdom Ramrudi, and have a sister school, Bright Seeds, in Chiang Mai as well. Both of their campuses are situated in prime residential areas of Bangkok that are surrounded by greenery and exude a sense of peacefulness and security. Our friendly and stimulating campuses are equipped with up-to-date facilities and resources. They are committed to delivering high-quality early childhood education with their experienced teachers who undergo regular teacher training and professional development. As a close-knit community, their students and their families are from over 40 different nationalities. Their mission, it's the mission of Kids Kingdom to provide students with a nurturing and balanced education of an international character delivered predominantly in English. 
Now, without further ado, let us watch the Kids Kingdom video. <laughs>
Fantastic. We also want to let you know that, again, as many of the schools have here uh, over the summit, uh, Kids Kingdom International Kindergarten and Kids Kingdom Ramrudi also have a special promotion that they are offering exclusively to people who have registered for the summit. And you can see here on the screen right now, it's a promotion for 50% off their registration fee. And so if you will be so kind as to reach out to Kids Kingdom International Kindergarten or Kids Kingdom Ramrudi and tell them that you saw it on our summit, uh, you can get that promotion. The next school that we'll be bringing up is NIST International School. Over the course of a few days in December of 1989, a group of parents, teachers, and school leaders drafted a three-page document calling for a new international school in Thailand, a school that is inclusive in its orientation, seeking and encouraging diversity in staff and students. They described a caring atmosphere where all would be held to high standards of tolerance and respect. When NIST opened its gates on the sunny morning of August 13th, 1992, 502 young learners turned that dream into a reality. NIST, the NIST school went on to become the first full international baccalaureate world school in Thailand. In the years since, thousands of students, parents, and teachers have left their mark on the school, embracing continual growth and improvement in service of their mission to inspire, empower, and enrich lives. They are more than a school. They are a community that believes that education can transform us and in turn, transform the world. Without further ado, I give you NIST International. I really love going to NIST because everyone made me feel so welcome from the first day. It's amazing how much I have learned and achieved since I started here. They helped me to discover what I'm good at and there are so many options for activities and learning. When choosing a school for our children, we were instantly impressed with the NIST program and their complete approach to education. I'll never forget my time at NIST. I had so many positive experiences that shaped me into the person I am today. We encourage our students to challenge us as much as we challenge them. I feel this develops fresh thinking and a passionately curious mind. Everywhere we look, we see challenges and opportunities. We strive to elevate and expand our programs, our learning, and our thinking. We create an environment that brings out the joy in learning. Safe spaces to explore and question. And nurture growth, always. Every space is a classroom. Every interaction is a connection. Every experience has the potential for learning and growth. Our learning program offers opportunities for long-term positive change that is truly transformational. At NIST, we believe student growth is multidimensional. Our service program encourages students to engage in community activities that develop solutions for the real world. Our goal is to equip each student to flourish through the highest academic standards, excellence in teaching and world-class facilities. We bring true joy to learning. As we embark on the next chapter of our NIST story, we do so with purpose and passion, motivated to constantly improve with our hearts and hands in the present and our eyes on the future. Building better programs, better facilities, and better opportunities for our community to challenge themselves, to grow, and to learn. What makes NIST so special to me? It's joy. two students are learning to be programmers. Earlier in the year, they worked with Codable and Coding Unplugged to learn about giving clear commands and debugging programs using loops and also using functions. This time we're building on that knowledge of programming and we're using robots. So we're using the Sphero robots and the students have learned to use block programming. 
So they're using problem solving skills to work out how to make the robots move. Sometimes they're exploring making the robot speak or even change color. So they're learning through trial and error and problem solving. They're learning to work out the cause and effect of what some of the blocks do. So with the movement blocks, they're learning that they need to change the speed, they need to change the time or the duration the robot um, rolls for, and they also need to change the direction. So they're learning a lot about programming, they're learning a lot about cause and effect, and they're also learning a lot about resilience and really working hard to figure out how to debug their programs. Uh, we're gonna give it to the bottle bricks and then they're gonna make stuff like flower beds with the bottles instead of just putting them in the sea. So our product is a board game and it's, it's going to help a fair nest because it's easy to make and it tells a story because the game is about farmers. So the reason we are making this is because um, a lot of the old coffee beans that Fairness doesn't sell goes out to like wastelands and it's not like good for the environment. It makes more trash. So this, these are old coffee beans and we're using it to make our body scrub so it doesn't go out to waste. So we're on the IA uh, Silver practice journey, which is the opportunity for them to learn the sets of skills that they've got to use when they're on their actual qualifying journey. So this journey, it's learning how to um, use a stand-up paddleboard, paddling along, how to read the river, learning how to navigate, learning how to work as a team. And that's preparing them for a three-day journey they'll do in two months time. Um, something super cool that I experienced was like the overall like nature, being able to see the nature because Bangkok is not like filled with a lot of green stuff and like nature. So it's really cool to be able to like experience that and like feel the breeze and like fresh air. Uh, one thing I learned on this trip was something very important that Troy taught me at the very, very start, which was respect the river. Um, if you respect it, it will respect you and so don't try and fight it. It's just experience the beauty of nature, respect it.
Fantastic. That was a great presentation from NIST. And now it's time to move on to our next school, which is Prem Tinsendolanda. I'm sure that I'm going to get need to repronounce that name, International School. But luckily, our next presenter is going to correct me immediately, which is fantastic. But Prem is a leading international boarding and day school loaded, located on a lush 100-acre campus in the foothills of north of Chiang Mai. It was the first school in Southeast Asia to offer all four international baccalaureate programs. Like families... Schools find strength in their core values. What matters most at Prem is engaging their students in joyful, personalized, and meaningful learning. Above all, they believe in nurturing creativity, compassion, integrity, open-mindedness, and good thinking. Prem is honored to be recognized as a leader in the development of the arts and creativity in international education. And I am very pleased to have with me Ms. Doc, Ms. Tam Fawcett. How are you today, Tam? I'm great, Stephen. Thank you very much. And your pronunciation was just fine. Are you serious? I mean, I, serious. you know, yes. I know that yes. I butcher a lot here on this little presentation, <laughs> but boy, that one, I felt like that one caught me really off guard. Um, we often just say Prem International School because it's a lot easier. Sure, I did. That's great. So Prem, uh, sorry, <laughs> Tam, now I'm going to call you Prem for the rest of the, the rest of the time now. So Tam, <laughs> As I've offered to the other schools uh, earlier today and also yesterday, I'd love for you to give us the opening intro of what does it mean to be at Prem? Like from, from your perspective, you know, like you know, what's the heart of Prem? Um, I am new to Prem. And uh, one of the very first things that I noticed was um, the community is, is very, very uh, solid and very inclusive and very engaging to everybody. Um, it's not just a student community, but it's really a school community that involves um, parents as much as it involves students. Um, interestingly enough, I did a, an elevator pitch with uh, some student leaders when I first arrived to try and get a sense of what Prem's story was. And it was really interesting to see that uh, the most frequently mentioned words from the students were a kind, caring, inclusive community. So I thought that that was pretty special coming yeah. from the students themselves. Um, and you will hear later from our creative director. Um, so creativity is also a really big part of who we are and who we've been for about 10 years and currently in education. Um, and the onset of such AI platforms such as ChatGPT, which is sort of taking the educational community by storm, um, it's, more, it, it's never been more important to engage students in creative and critical thinking. And wow. we have been acknowledged as leaders um, internationally in that field. I'm, I'm, I, I want to. I want to congratulate you for being the first person to mention Chat GPT in, a, in 36 <laughs> hours. That's fantastic. Yes, yes, um, yes. I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm personally enamored with it, and I'm, I'm looking forward to talking with you and, and Alex afterwards about this as well. Mm -hmm. um, I think it's something that people need to not be afraid of, and mm -hmm. to realize that um, it can be used to further students' uh, thinking in higher levels of thinking, such as creative and critical thought. Hundred um, percent. It's here to stay, you know. It's it's not, not here, going anywhere. So not only here to stay, but they OpenAI just uh, just announced ChatGPT or GPT four today. As a matter of fact, they had their presentation today. So fantastic. But we're not here to talk about that technology. We're here yeah. to talk about Prem. Yes. You, I believe, unless I'm completely mistaken, are our only school in Chiang Mai that is in this summit today. And so I want. Uh, yes, I, probably. I would love for you to. Give me that that juxtaposition between, you know, being a school in Bangkok or in that surrounding area of Bangkok and Chiang Mai. Like, what are the differences that I experience as a family or as a student or maybe some of the benefits and opportunities that I, I would receive in Chiang Mai? For sure. Um, first of all, uh, we are on a lush 100 acre campus. Uh, set in the foothills of uh, Chiang Mai. Uh, it's absolutely a stunning facility. Um, so students get to not be uh, immersed in, in big city life. Um, you know, there's, there's the lush, lushness, there's the peace and the quiet um, that comes with that kind of environment. Plus, we have amazing facilities as a result of having that, that great size. So, um, you know, we have a um, tennis <clears throat> pro 
um, and six tennis courts. We have a golf pro and uh, we have a golf driving range. Um, we have a um, professional cricket pitch, an Olympic sized swimming pool. Um, it goes on and on and on. Mm. Uh, um, and, um, you know, I've already mentioned the, the tightness of the community. We are also a boarding school. Um, so, you know, students have that opportunity as well to develop themselves as a community of learners, both during the day and, uh, you know, to have that independence uh, that's well supervised um, and well thought out. Uh, at the end of the day, the ability to partake in all of these activities. We offer actually over 100 activities throughout the year. Um, wow. So students are not, uh, you know, spending hours in traffic going back and forth. We are also a day school, um, not, not just a boarding school. Um, but we have um, a lot to offer. Um, we also have a um, positive pressure system in our learning spaces. So what that means is, um, and it's the case right now in Bangkok, uh, in Chiang Mai as well, uh, when the air quality is not great, we have near zero AQI in our classrooms. Um, mm. So that's, that's something that is of great importance to parents. Yep. Um, I failed to mention as part of that learning environment, uh, we also have a farm and a forest school. So mm -hmm. for us, um, sustainability and giving students real life experiences in the world is of great importance. Um, so on a weekly basis, our students, particularly our early year students and our junior school students spend time at the farm um, and at the forest school. Um, engaging in real life learning experiences from building shelters to planting seeds, um, being with animals. Uh, we are also a World Wildlife Foundation Green Flag Eco School. Mm, fantastic. Uh, we do actually have a question from someone in our chat here. And mm -hmm. the question is, what ages does your boarding school start from? And what pastoral care is in place for younger students, please? Um, so we start from uh, the age of six. Um, we do have uh, some students that are of that age. Um, predominantly, uh, it's middle years um, and, and senior school. Uh, but we have a very strong pastoral program, uh, both within our curricular day program. Um, we actually have um, an administrator who is responsible for that uh, within our school. Uh, but our boarding community as well um, is uh, very fortunate. We're not just a school with boarders. We are actually a full boarding program. Um, and our teachers are the um, parents of the boarders. So, um, so there's that connection that extends from the day through into the evening. And on weekends, um, a full program, they're always off um, you know, it, getting involved in the community, exploring, learning outside of the classroom as well. What about uh, the ecosystem in Chiang Mai of other schools in order to have intramurals or inter, you know, inter sports mm -hmm. competitions and these types of things is talk to me about how robust that system is or are students traveling often to other parts, other countries, Bangkok, etc.? Um, we do have a CMAC, which is the Chiang Mai Athletic Council of Schools, um, and we um, host uh, often the tournaments, uh, depending on the facilities that um, are required at that time. Um, that is predominantly where um, our athletes um, do exercise their talents, would be within Chiang Mai. Okay. And part of that, part of that uh, association. Um, I believe we actually, um, oh, there was, our, 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 our viewer was just saying thank you for answering their question. I was just checking oh, to see if we had another one. Um, final question for you. What are the typical, um, you know, when someone comes to you as, a, as a, a new parent or a new family, what are some of the typical questions or challenges that they may see either you know, transitioning to Chiang Mai, choosing Chiang Mai over other alternatives mm -hmm. like Phuket or, or Bangkok? Um, and, you know, how do you, what's your answer for those challenges? 
I think one of the things that um, parents are always uh, interested in above and beyond the curriculum is just um, how they are going to fit into the new environment. Mm -hmm. um, and as I said, uh, for us, community is a big thing and we have a very robust uh, parent school community. Um, we have grade level ambassadors and we have cultural ambassadors as well. Um, so that as soon as a parent becomes connected to our school, um, we connect them to their specific grade level parent ambassador and their cultural ambassador. So we can ensure that um, parents, for example, who do not have English as their primary language um, feel welcomed and, and get the information that they need. And our PSC continues with bi-weekly sessions that are in um, connection with our administrative team uh, so that they're never wondering um, about the platforms that we're using or about the assessment practices or, or what's taking place, um, as well as that PSC hosting um, major events throughout the year to, to keep people well connected to our community. Fantastic. I was just told by my team here as well that I, I just I have to put this in here that Prem is not the only school from Chiang Mai. We actually have Unity Concord as well. And I apologize. Oh, okay. for, I, I <laughs> okay. want to apologize That's to them. Good. Just just for yeah. anybody who's listening yeah. right now, there is another school from from Chiang Mai as well. But yeah. um, so final question for you before we move into your video is what um, you know, what do you see in terms of development of the student body or the campus, you know, in the near term and maybe as in the, in the longer vision? Are there things that you're particularly excited about or is there a development plan that, that you're following right now that uh, you can tell us about? Um, yes, in the future, um, I think that, uh, you know, we will just continue to expand on some of the great programs that we already have. Creativity, um, as I mentioned, is a big part of who we are, and Alex will expand upon that, um, as well as looking at um, renovating some of our facilities, um, because we are um, 22 years old. Um, and, uh, you know, you need to continue to um, ensure that your learning spaces are um, state of the art. Um, we are looking at making some major changes in our middle years program um, and, make, and, and becoming even more of a... Um, uh, no, my goodness, the, the word just eluded me. Uh, a maker culture. A maker ah, culture. maker culture, sure, sure. We're, we're very much about um, students being uh, actively involved in their learning um, and personalizing that as much as possible, um, beginning with our early years and, and trying to um, continue that joy of learning uh, throughout the, the school process by having experiences that are really meaningful to each individual child um, from their interest level as well as their strengths. Fantastic. Tam, I cannot thank you enough for taking time out of your morning to speak with us today about My Prem pleasure. International School. Um, we're going to move on to your video and then we'll have Alex to talk to us about some of these creative art programs as well after that. So let's watch your video now. Thank you so much. Thank you. 
years at Prem focuses on an approach that promotes happiness, confidence, independence, and caring citizens of the world. The safe and inspiring environment nurtures positive relationships and develops the holistic child to have a sense of belonging in the community. Our play-based approach supports whole child development and fosters connections to the world around us. Teachers, families, and children work together as a community. We aspire to guide our children to become global citizens who make the world a better place. Early years teachers play an important role in the learning process, learning alongside the children as a guide and resource. Teachers hold a strong image of the child viewing children as capable, active participants who are valued for who they are as individuals. Children are empowered with the support of the teachers to direct their own learning. They make choices in how they spend their time, the resources they use, and what they inquire into. Teachers support the learning through intentionally planned environments, experiences, and questioning. Teachers carefully observe and document the learning process of individuals and groups of children, capturing interests that emerge through play. In the early years, we use stories to bring the children's learning to life. At times, we might sit together and read stories, but sometimes one word in that story might take us on a whole other journey. So we might be reading, and then we see a word that takes our interest, such as animal. Then we rush to the role play area, throw on some costumes, get on stage, and see where that word takes us. And the children's imagination allow those stories to go far further than we could ever imagine. While the indoor environment is carefully planned in response to the children's learning, we also value the natural environment. Here at Prem, the natural environment provides rich learning opportunities, allowing children to develop an appreciation for living things and the beautiful spaces around campus. Students in early years visit the farm and take part in forest school every week. The early years garden is another space where students have the chance to make meaningful connections between the indoors and outdoors, using the mud kitchen and through experiences of growing, cooking, and eating their own food. Long periods of time are spent outside, allowing children to develop language, strengthen fine motor skills and gross motor skills, build confidence, and the ability to take risks. There are opportunities for exploration, questioning, interpreting, creating, and expressing. At the center of our early years program is well-being. We know that children need social and emotional skills, and these are the skill sets that the world and even our adult lives are so frequently missing. So what it means is that we're spending a lot of time getting to know our children and their inner world so that we can help them to understand their own inner world and eventually also develop the skills of empathy so they can be caring for each other. We also have a lot of mindfulness practices and what that means at this age is really helping children just nourish the natural skills that they already have. Kids naturally are engaged in their world, are curious, are totally present. We can see it when they're fully absorbed in something that they're doing. Mindfulness means paying attention to just one thing that's happening right now. Documentation is a strategy for teachers to understand and make visible the learning taking place. It involves observation, conversation, and interpretation. It's used as a tool for assessment and evidence in the children making meaning. By making learning visible, we give value to the children's voice, wonderings, creativity, and identity. Documentation is a process of gathering evidence for making work visible to the children, teachers, parents, and wider community. Intentional listening, responsiveness, flexibility, and negotiation are a part of this process. Teachers meet regularly to share the learning of the children through photos, videos, conversations, and their pieces of work. The teachers use tools and resources to guide them in rich dialogue, interpretation, reflection, and research.
All right, there we go. We actually made it here to Mr. Alex. How are you today? No, let's see. Now we have some audio problems. Let's see. I cannot hear you. So no, I can't hear you. So let's, let's figure it out. We'll figure it out on the fly here. Um, if you go to those audio settings that are down at the bottom of the screen there, let's just see if you're connected. And while Mr. Alex is working on his audio connection right now, I want to remind everyone that this is, you know, you're witnessing right now a live presentation. So this is, you know, we're real. Um, even though Mr. Alex is going to talk about AI and some things that maybe aren't real uh, and how we can leverage those things, um, you know, I encourage you to put your questions into the chat right now. Uh, if you do have questions for for uh, Prem, for NIST, for Kids Kingdom, for KIS, for you know any of the schools that are coming up, RIS, Unity, Concord, etc. Um, you know, part of the reason why we do this, or one of the core reasons why we do this is so that we can have these real-time interactions with our, um, you know, with our, with our schools and with the people who work at those schools so that we can get your questions answered. Um, so, you know, if you're on Facebook, if you are on YouTube, um, do us a favor, you know, throw your questions in there. And I've seen some great interaction between, you know, KPIS and some people, uh, people are asking about, um, different places to live, different, you know, aspects of the school. Um, but I'll check with you. Mr. Alex, how are we doing there? Still no luck. You can hear me, but I cannot hear you. Hmm. Would you do me the favor of maybe logging out and just logging back in to the whole system? You know, if you just let's, let's see if that works. I promise that, uh, I am able to uh, spin a web while while you're able to do that. Can you hear me, Mr. Alex? No, you can't hear me. Okay. Hmm. All right. So while we're waiting for Alex, I am going to bring Tam back on. Hi, Tam. Bring me back. Hi. <laughs> so I'm not sure how, what, what, what you'd like to do. We can, uh, you know, I could move on to another school and we could circle back to the uh, fine arts or sorry, the, the, the presentation for Mr. For Mr. Alex around your art enrichment program and those kinds of things. Uh, or what, what, what would you like to do? Um... I'm not sure. Uh, I would definitely like Alex to be able to uh, present, but it, you know, as you say, it is live. Um, so rather than perhaps uh, sitting here, I, I'm not sure. Um, I don't know if he heard you suggest that um, he log out. So um, maybe I will just send him a message right now. Um, suggesting that he try yeah. that and we'll see, we'll Absolutely. see how that goes. Sure. And I just, I just sent him the same message as well. Oh, you did? Okay. And so there is a question in the chat for you. Okay, uh, great. Which, you know what, while we're here with you, I'm going to make sure that we're actually have the correct name on the screen here, um, which was about your air Except pollution. I'm not Mr. I know, I know you're not Mr. <laughs> I'm going to have to crack the whip on somebody uh, who, whoever created that. But, um, okay. you know, the question was, uh, you had mentioned it in passing, but let's, uh, you know, I want to reiterate it because the question was what steps that Prem have in place for the pollution in Chiang Mai? Can you go over that again for us? Yes. So we have a positive pressure system. Um, I don't know the actual um, technical aspects of it, but I do know that um, we are the only school in Chiang Mai to have this system. Um, and I think that there is maybe one other school in Bangkok who has it. So it's definitely uh, the state of the art um, answer currently to uh, the AQI issues. And um, regardless what the AQI is outside, um, we have near zero AQI in our learning spaces. So um, I think too that we are one of the few schools um, that actually has a live recording on our website. If you go to our website, 
um, and we have air quality um, listed on the, the top bar. And you click on that and you can see um, the air quality as it changes uh, throughout the day, both outside as well as in our learning spaces. And we cover four main learning spaces that you will see on our website, our junior school, middle school, um, senior school, and our, um, our gym facility. Fantastic. All right. Well, Alex has now come back into the scene, so I'm Great. going to bring him on and let's see if we can hear him. Let's hope so. Alex. Ah, good morning, Stephen. How are you? Sorry, plagued by some small technical issues this morning. You know, but, it's, it's, it's technology. This is what we do. We're, we're, you know, we're live without a net and that's how you handle it. You know, you just you move on and you make it happen. So we, you have a presentation on the importance of creative thinking in education in the face of AI. Pretty fast. Absolutely. It's something I've, I've spent the last uh, 20 years of my career working within. It's something I'm massively passionate about and it's something that we are doing incredibly well um, at Prem and, and we're very proud of, of, of that work. So it'd be a great opportunity to talk about it. So yeah, and, and uh, riddle me this then, you know, everyone who's talking about AI, AI right now have been, some of them, you know, happily thrown into the deep end, some of them feeling a little sideswiped, some of them feeling like they've been just hit by a bus because Chad GPT is, you know, talking about changing jobs and changing the education sector and changing so many different things. But here mm -hmm. you just said, you've been thinking you've been doing this for 20 years. So riddle that for me, like, um, how long has AI been around? Like, what is this? Is this something that we're dealing with every day? Well, I think from from, from my point of view, um, if, you, if you almost put AI to, to one side, um, I was very, very lucky uh, a good, say, ooh, 15 years ago or so in my, in, in my career to work with the late Sir Ken Robinson, um, who was uh, really one of the pioneering voices for getting people to rethink education systems, to look at the importance of uh, creative thinking, to look at creativity across the curriculum, to look at the importance of the arts as, as, as being central to developing young people. Um, so. Uh, I almost feel as though what AI has done is, is to reshine the spotlight on what we prioritize in, in education, um, looking at some of the core myths, such as core subjects, looking at the important skills that are developed through engaging um, with creative thinking, engaging with the arts, and, and really looking at what what are we wanting from our young people? What type of young people do we want to go out into uh, the world? So I think the AI component has really uh, started to reignite um, that conversation and in a much wider way because it's more visceral. People can see it, people understand it better because they can see what things like chat GPT uh, can do. Um, and obviously the, the, the questions that arise for that for our schools and for our education systems. Excellent. Well, why don't we move on to your presentation uh, and let's, you know, we'll, 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 we'll see what you have to offer here. Uh, I just need to do a couple of things here. I'm going to add it to the stream. I'm going to move this out. Okay, so I'll, um, I'll, I'll get you to, to, to move through these slides for me, Stephen. But I wanted to start with this particular question. If we move on to this next slide here. You can see all of these um, all of these jobs here are impacted already by AI, and it may be that these are not necessarily career sectors that any one parent might aspire for their child to have, but they are being impacted. Uh, needless uh, needless to say, next slide, please. Um, so I want to plant this seed about the arts, and I did touch on that in our in our previous conversation, because many people look at arts and education as being something to engage with if your child wants to become an artist, a musician, um, uh, an actor or otherwise. Next slide. Uh, and here's this thing that the, the chat GPT logo that's, that's come that's shone this spotlight um, on what needs to be central to our education systems for our children and young people to be successful going out into the world. Next slide, please. And as you can see here already, not just those vocational careers, but something which would be an aspirational career uh, for many parents and for certainly for uh, children who are interested in going on to high achieving uh, jobs and in, into certain uh, job sectors, already 
AI is beating the uh, capacity to perform well of lawyers. Next slide. And it's not, uh, it's, not just, it's not just law. You can see AI is going to have an impact um, on medicine, uh, on those who want to become doctors, even surgeons. Next slide. So um, although AI is going to take a lot of traditional roles and a lot of traditional skills and automate them, there are things that it struggles to do, and many would say it will never be able to do. Next slide. And here's the list. I won't read through all of these things, but you can see things like communication and collaboration, divergent and critical thinking, aesthetic appreciation, cultural literacy. These are, to my mind, the skills that are naturally nurtured through engaging with the arts and having opportunity in all subject areas to think creatively. Next slide, please. So what can schools do to help cultivate these things? Next slide. Well, here are the things, these skills, emotional intelligence and empathy, creativity and innovation, ethical, moral decision-making. These are the areas that arguably we don't want AI to be involved in. We don't want a computer making decisions about ethical and moral, <laughs> moral decision-making. It could be disastrous. Next slide, please. So uh, who is in agreement? This is not a fringe voice. I don't think I represent uh, this idea alone. These are the global experts. You can click, Stephen, and these, these will come up. OECD, the Organization for Economic and Cultural Development. Next, slide, uh, next button. UNESCO, huge featured report on the future of education just a year ago, where uh, creative thinking, connection to community are massively uh, at the forefront of what are being recommended by UNESCO. And lastly, the Durham Commission in the UK uh, came out a couple of years ago, really focused on the importance of having an arts centralized learning in order to develop these types of skills in our children and in our young people. Next slide. So here's some, uh, here's some data. Um, participation in the arts can increase cognitive abilities by up to 20% nearly. Next. Learning through arts and culture can improve attainment in maths and English, creating agency, getting students excited about their learning. Next slide, please. Learning through arts and culture develops skills and behavior that lead children to do better. Um, the evidence is there. It's something that was first being talked about more than 40 years ago um, by the late Sir Ken Robinson. It's got the spotlight being shone back on it by the emergence of AI. And I'd just like to, if we can go to the next slide, I think it's our video. And before we start this, I would just like to say at Prem, we have a cultural and creative learning laboratory by the name of Artist Residency Thailand. It has been recognized internationally. It is a model that is really focusing on helping to develop all of the components of skills that come about that are needed in the face of AI and arguably should be central to what we want from our children and our young people. And if you could just play uh, this short video, Stephen, it will give our audience an insight into what we're doing at Prem. Many schools bring in practicing artists perhaps once, maybe twice a year at the most. What we've experienced here is the Artist Residency Thailand program where it is an essential part of how the school feels, how it operates, its ethos, its values and its priorities. And to be immersed in a school with that, um, that approach and that essence has been uh, really informative. The whole setup, the whole framework of this, allows for practitioners to, to give something back, to, to educate, but also to learn at the same time. And, and I'd recommend it to anybody who gets a chance to go on this. 
what uh, Yolanda and different artists bring is mostly about to do with creativity and using inspiration from your own experiences and it's less about researching from others and more about digging into yourself and finding what's there. So having a place to work that's comfortable, that's supportive, that's surrounded by people that are interested and also uh, very uh, fascinated by the process helps to motivate progress and so I was amazed in these little time frames how much we got done. The school is brilliant in the sense that it has this residency uh, at all because it's rare it doesn't exist in many places it's different it's freely it's different like everything it changed my perspective of dancing it's unique in my experience that you know the diversity of this program and the way that the arts here are so integrated into the into the working life of the school working from visiting people outside we can learn more about the world around us and be more conscious of the different people. The balance within the Artist Residency Thailand um, program is very, very fulfilling. The most fun thing for me that I enjoyed is I like painting and cutting out the puppets. Artist Residency Thailand has proven it's a model that works. I believe it can be replicated and that without question it has a demonstrable positive impact on the lives of the children and the young people who engage with it. And let's put us back in the great right places. That looks like a fantastic program. Is there anything that you want to round out or tie that in a bow with for the people who are listening today? Yeah, I think I would just end by saying, um, to repeat the point, engaging with the arts, um, making time for it in schools is not about creating a world necessarily full of artists and musicians and actors. Um, engaging in the arts are the main way in which an education system can foster and develop the types of skills that humanity needs and that AI doesn't have. Fantastic. You know, I I, I would love to continue this conversation. As I, I, I suggest, I, you know, I would suspect many, many people uh, are very intrigued by this conversation and would love to continue with you. And I hope that they will. So for I want to remind everybody, if you would like to talk to Mr. Alex or Tam or anybody else at Prem, please do reach out to them either in their chat or uh, through their uh, their website. But um, thank you very much for taking the time out, putting that presentation together and letting us know about this in, important program that you have. Stephen, it's a pleasure. Thank you so much. And just like several of the other schools, Prem International Boarding and Day School also has a promotion that's exclusive to everybody who is coming to or who has come to this uh, this event today uh, and yesterday. The promotion is that there's no application fee, 20% off their first year in their enrollment fee, and 40% off boarding for those people who are attending or and registered for this virtual school summit. That's pretty special stuff there. So if you are interested in uh, you know, taking advantage of this offer, please reach out to Tam or her staff or her, her team up there, and um, they will be happy to accommodate you. Moving on to our next school. Oh, Pull them up right now. We have RIS. RIS is one of Thailand's longest running international schools. Ramrudi, which Ramrudi, excuse me, Thai for Union of Hearts, perfectly captures this Catholic school's philosophy of welcoming all children, emphasizing social responsibility and ensuring a warm environment. 21st century learning at RIS focuses on the three elements of head, which is knowledge, hands, which is skills, and heart, which is values. Students are nurtured to develop necessary critical thinking skills for success in the IB and AP programs of high school. Since 1957, the RIS community has been a connected global network where teachers often state their admiration for their students and decades of alumni look back at RIS with fond memories and nostalgia. And without further ado... <laughs> <laughs> Good morning. Sorry. Did I catch you off? 
<laughs> we, we were messing around over here. So oh, <laughs> as, right. as one does. <laughs> Everyone, you know, one of the things we need a little more levity in our lives. You know, I think that's, <laughs> that's just the way it should be. So Miss Madeline, it's very you. nice. Very nice to meet you. How are you? Very nice to meet you too. I'm, I'm great. I just came from some um, student presentations, which is the highlight of my days when I get to be with students. So I'm good. It's a good day so far. <laughs> Excellent. I am, um, as I have offered to the other uh, individuals who are presenting for their schools earlier today and yesterday, I'd love for you to go beyond what I just read about RIS and you know, speak to me like exactly about what you were just saying. What's the heart of RIS for you? How do you experience every day? And, and what do you, you know, what, what do you look forward to every day? It's a great question. Um, I have been here for about 22 years. So I, I do know a lot of the historical. I've been on a journey with the school. I've, I've often delved into the question of what is our identity? What makes us different um, with in different venues, talking to, you know, parents and students and other Know, teachers, administrators. And I think what we, we keep coming back to is that RIS has, it's a sense of community. It's a, there's a really strong sense of community here that I think the teachers often mention, the students mention. Also, um, we offer a values program. As you know, it's a, it's a Catholic, it's owned by the Redemptorist Priest. So we do have a values program and religious program, religion program that I think um, goes beyond that. We really care a lot about the development of the whole child and also their Character development. Mm. So I, I think that is really important to RIS, um, character development. Um, you know, also, in, in addition to that, um, just as I said before, the community of the school. Sure, 100%. Tell me about, you know, that when you think about character development and that, you know, that the, mm -hmm. the differentiating factor of being founded with the Catholic Church as a base how, how does that play out in terms of the different types of programs that you have, maybe some different offerings that you have, the different types of families that you attract? Um, yeah. what, what kind of community does that really look like? Well, what, what's really interesting, if you see our vision and mission, what we often, I hear every day, several times a day, is include, in, being an inclusive school community. Hmm. So when you think about being a Catholic-based school, you might think it's, it's very, in, you know, very what's a good word, um, that that sort of takes precedent over over the school sure. or what you see every day. But if you look at RS, it's uh, predominantly our student members are, are Buddhist. We're mm -hmm. in a Muslim community and we're a Catholic school. Sure. So yeah. it's just a really rich, rich environment that is very inclusive and very accepting. Well, Some of the yeah. courses that we have that are different, I think because of that is, like I mentioned, we do have a values class and a religion class. Religion classes for those students that are Catholic, um, but running parallel to that is values, where mm. we look at um, who you are as a person, um, how you're a great member of society, um, how you contribute to the community. It's based on a lot of the Catholic character values, but it's also something we, we're very proud of, um, it, which is a little bit different, I think. Okay, fantastic. So what does that diversity look like? Um, we have a question from a woman named Catherine Lee about mm -hmm. what's the Thai diversity at the school as I want an American curriculum, but I don't want my child to struggle socially if they don't speak Thai. Now, that's a great question. We That's another thing we've often talked about with identity is being, I would say about 83% of our, our students are Thai nationals. But what's interesting with that is that because we are an international school, we use U.S. standards and our teachers are, you know, Western from different parts of the world, diversity there, um, or actually they're from all over the world. The students are very internationally minded, if, if that makes sense. Often mm -hmm. they'll tell me when they graduate from RIS, you know, I, I'm, I, I, I'm so internationally minded that sometimes I don't fit in um, <laughs> because of that. So, so it was, I think when we talk about being internationally minded, I don't like think it's full, a full circle um, it becomes a problem. You know, yeah. Yes. And I don't think it's uh, being internationally minded isn't necessarily where you come from. It's, you know, the school that you go through or the, the education that you receive that makes you internationally minded, regardless of your nationality. If, if, and that's mm -hmm. how, we, how we approach it. We think we think um, our kids do very well. Fantastic. Um, so tech, talk to me a little bit about some of the diversity of extracurricular activities, mm -hmm. um, you know, community activities, bringing maybe families and parents into the into the mix and, you know, how they interact with the school. You know, sort of what is what does that look like mm -hmm. outside the classroom? Well, we have an extensive um, after school program. It's, we call it the extended day program. Um, aside from the classes and the courses that we offer inside the school, we have lots of variety around with the electives, what they can choose. 
um, our parents are often involved. We just had a, a family fun fair day where um, the whole community came out. Um, they contributed with, you know, we have the usual international food fairs where they, you know, they have representation of their, their different foods. And, but we also, we had a fun fair, which I thought brought the whole community together. Um, we have, the parents are very involved and very helpful. We, you know, a big Christmas, Christmas celebration. We have a, a very, very good sports program in addition, program in addition to the, um, I want to say the, the performing arts we just had a presentation with Little Mermaid. Mm. That was just amazing. The parents loved it. The kids loved it. Um, so I think it's a really well-rounded. I think we offer so many different um, things to bring parents in and to build that community. Excellent. What about connections to other schools in terms of intramurals mm -hmm. and uh, yeah. maybe maybe even going beyond other schools? Uh, mm -hmm. We've heard many of the other, other schools talk about um, – uh, off-campus activities like being able to go to mm -hmm. camps or being able to go on service trips and those kinds of things. Can you speak about some of that? Yes, this, that's a great question. I'm really excited to answer that um, <laughs> because um, something else that is very distinct, I think, for RIS is service learning. It's very important to us, you know, as a as a, as, as a religious foundation, but also our, as I said, our identity. So right now, every class in, in elementary school is going on a service learning project. It might be to... Um, you know, to an orphanage or to the, the home for the elderly, um, which they're doing right now. We also have, um, I want to say, in outside of the school, for middle school, there's a, we call it the, we call it the ETK, which is Explore the Kingdom. Mm -hmm. So each grade level goes for a week to different parts of the, of the country. Um, it's tied into environmental issues and also getting to know our host country um, in a better way. 100%. High school has their trips. They do their senior trip. Um, they also have a strong service learning um, component that is led by we have a service learning um, organizer who is always honest, like we need to go to this school and, and, and paying for need to go on this trip to learn more about, you know, our some of our programs that the Redemptorist Priests host. So there's a lot going on all the time. <laughs> <laughs> I'm looking over here. Something. What am I forgetting? Is just such a long list. <laughs> well, we, we also we also do have do. another uh, another speaker who's going to be presenting after okay. you after we do our video okay. session. So maybe we'll ask a few questions there. But I want to ask okay. you, uh, you know, sort of a final question before we do the video. What are you looking forward to as the school year closes, or maybe you know into the next year in terms of development, you know, growth mm -hmm. of the student body, you know, mm -hmm. changes on the campus, those types of things. Yeah, that's another thing that looking at the. the the, the maintenance, or not, I don't say maintenance, but things that we were adding to the campus. I know we're redoing our whole enormous, I don't even know how big it is because it's so big. Our football field is being completely redone. Big is um, great. Our and yeah. enormous. <laughs> <laughs> um, but, uh, but something I'm looking forward to, like, I think this year or for the past couple of years has been difficult because all the wonderful things that we do do for school spirit and school community has sort of take, was on hold because of COVID. And getting back on campus is just we've we've brought it all back and then some. So when I said our parents get involved in things, they go big. <laughs> so we don't just bring back something; we bring it back really big. Um, so I think the school spirit that we've seen this year um, can it has been amazing, and it can only get better. I think bringing back all those things that we do outside of the school is something to look forward to next year. Um, yeah, I think we're. It feels almost like we kind of did a little diversion. Now we're back on track. Yeah. And with all the wonderful things that we do. 100% fantastic. Mm -hmm. Well, Miss Madeline, thank you so much for rushing over from the last event to come and talk to us today. <laughs> I really appreciate you taking time out of what I'm thank sure you. is an incredibly busy schedule as an elementary and middle school principal. But we're going to move on to your video and then we'll have your colleagues speak with us after this. Well, thank you for having me. It was a pleasure. Thanks. Ruomrudi is a Thai word that means union of hearts. Founded in 1957 by Redemptorist Fathers, RIS continues to be a model of excellence and innovation in global education, offering a robust, modified American curriculum stewarded by a teaching staff rich in expertise, creativity, and compassion.
Rumrudi was one of the first international schools to have been accredited by the Western Association of Schools and Colleges in Thailand. RIS nurtures the minds, hearts, and hands of its students from pre-K-2 to grade 12. IB Diploma Program and AP students score far above world averages and attend the most prestigious universities worldwide. Students at RIS excel not only in the classroom, but through leadership activities such as the World Scholars Cup, Model United Nations, Knowledge Bowl, and the National Honor Society. RIS has a vibrant performing and visual arts curriculum. There are many service learning opportunities and one of the largest athletic programs of any international school in Southeast Asia. Our alumni hold prominent leadership positions in diverse fields, including government, business, medicine, media, entertainment, and humanitarian sectors in both public and private domains, locally and internationally. Given the rich academic background of our professionals, it is only natural that they inspire each other on a daily basis and create an engaging and challenging teaching and learning environment for our students. As it has been for the last 60 years, the goal of RIS has been to develop creative, compassionate, critical thinkers who are committed to leading happy, healthy lives while helping others do the same. And this is why RIS students continue to forge lasting, positive legacies for the world. Showing. I'm from Wilmudi International School. I'm 11 years old. I'm in grade 5 and I really enjoy here. Hi, my name is Pumpoi. I'm 10 years old and I have two brothers. We all attend Wilmudi. My name is Shona Pai and I'm 10 years old. I've been in Aria since the first grade. Yes, I did enjoy AD class. Indeed, it was almost my whole life. Yes, I did because the teacher was very helpful and I was on task doing my work. My friends were really funny and kind. The teacher was caring too. I mostly improved my writing, spelling, and reading. Writing because I learned how to use New words and sentences, and when I first came into EOD class, I had trouble with writing, reading, and I also had trouble with spelling. I probably improved the most by talking to my friends in English, writing, and doing my work, and playing games that are also learning too. I improved by reading a level I can, and when I start learning some new words, I start going level by level to, to go up and up so I could get out of the ELD early. My teacher helped me improve and my parents helped me improve by uh, listening, focusing on my task, and learning about English more and using words that are very difficult, but I tried my best to do it. My teacher always told me to look back at it again so I could see if I made a mistake or not. They teach me about supporting sentences, main ideas, nouns, pronouns, adverbs, words, reading, and etc. I will give some advice to them that to focus more and write more than three to two sentences. Try your best. Try new words in your sentences. 
try to write more, read more books, and this is really important. Creativity and imagination. Don't worry about failing because it's all you learn from your mistakes and it's fine to fail, but you have to keep working to improve yourself to exit EOD more. I really like about the quality and the, the equality that they gave us and mostly the people who are here who treat people the same. And they always make sure everyone is safe and if they don't feel comfortable, they will try their best to make them feel comfortable. Oh, because like the teachers here are really kind of patients and the classmates, oh yeah, they're, they're really nice. I made like four friends and they're really funny. I love Rumor D because my friends are very uh, kind and they help me a lot with my work, my homework and a lot more. All right, so we are back. Uh, oops, I have to bring Mr. Hi. Michael onto the screen so that we can actually see you. How are you doing, Mr. Michael? I'm doing well, thank you. Thank you for having me. No, my my pleasure, absolutely. That was a fantastic video presentation about uh, <laughs> RAS. And now I believe that you are actually going to be talking about student life at RAS. Yes, and so just to continue. Sorry, just to continue from what Miss Madeline was saying about our community life and extracurricular activities. Absolutely fantastic. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to share your presentation right now, and then we will have you take off Thank and you. take us through it. <laughs> All right. Hi, um, and welcome to, oh, let's see. Let me, may I, <laughs> I think I, I don't have it uh, on full screen mode, right? Sorry. We, we, we can see it full screen, so um, we can see the full uh, presentation. I see. All right. Um, right now, um, um, let me introduce myself. My name is uh, Michael, and I am the supervisor for the Advancement Office, which includes communications and admissions and alumni relations, among other things at RIS. So I'm going to talk about student life at RIS. Um, talking about student life, I'd like to introduce first our school mascot, which ha uh, which is the Phoenix. And this is. <laughs> and speaking of the Phoenix. Um, that leads us to the principles of Phoenix, which are our school-wide learner outcomes. And with that, um, there are things like uh, three elements, head, hands, and heart. With our school-wide learner outcomes, um, head uh, touches on knowledge, creativity, critical thinking, open-mindedness, hands, it's about developing skills, if having effective communication, collaboration, resourcefulness, and heart instilling values, um, embracing diversity, leading happy and healthy lives, and helping others. Um, so going on with that, I would just like to go through a whole school year of, of, of RIS through extracurricular curricular activities. And you, you'll probably see in the slides how we have markers for where we kind of try to display what's, what, which of the three elements that we're, we're highlighting um, with this activity. So uh, elementary and middle school life, our day usually starts off with a morning assembly. Um, pictured here is our director, uh, Father Pete Chittapun, who's also the provincial of the Redemptorists of Thailand. Moving on, this is a little display of pre-K life. Um, we have a Reggio Emilia uh, inspired uh, program for early years. Um, this is, these are our kids in action. These are our kids with their teddy bears. So you'll see the little markers there, heads, hands, heart. <laughs> Moving on, um, elementary school kids. We celebrate writing and I'm gonna share a lot of traditions and customs that our elementary school program likes to celebrate every year. Writing, bonding over books, moving on. Halloween, all school dress up day. Now this is, uh, Miss Madeline was talking about community earlier. So this is a great example of, 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 of one of those big all school events. So Halloween character dress up day. Actually, these slides should really be appearing <laughs> one at a time, but right now it's appearing in full screen. So anyway, I'm sorry about that. 
This picture is um, our parent auxiliary in action. So as you can see here, this is just one event in which our parents are involved in. There are many, many of them. Um, our parent auxiliary here is handing out treats for our students. And speaking of our parents, they also get involved in some classroom activities. Like for example, over here, the picture on the top left, we have our parents in a pre-K class helping out with Lycratong decorations. Now with Lycratong, it kicks off our International Cultural Week, which is a custom at RAS. We celebrate this every year. And our ES kids have a student exhibition in which they share their work and research on different cultures of the world. So all these pictures here are just examples of that. And all these things that you're seeing on the board, they're all, they're all student led and produced by them. Um, moving on, these are other extracurricular activities. They all, you know, of course, performing arts. We, we touch on all elements of our principles of Phoenix, head, hands, heart. These are opportunities for our students to perform. So this is a picture of a pre-K Christmas class. We have our elementary school uh, nativity production. We are a Catholic school. Moving on, we have our elementary, more elementary school pictures, our high school and middle school band and choir. We have our knowledge bowl. Our knowledge bowl, well, I forgot to mention that I'm also an alumnus of RIS and I can remember from even when I was a child at RIS, Knowledge Bowl was one of our favorite events. So we have a high school Knowledge Bowl, but pictured here is our middle school one. Moving on, we, we have an annual science fair. So it's a big um, event in which our parents also take part in. So these are some of our middle school students from the last two years. You could see them here talk, sharing their work with upper elementary students. Now moving on. Now, a big staple of middle school life is the annual ETK or Explore the Kingdom trip. So I'm showing you pictures from, from a recent trip in December. Now, the ETK trip is a great bonding experience. It's also a opportunity to, an opportunity to um, you know, work on skills, things like <laughs> cooking your own food, outdoor activities, trekking, hiking, and even, you know, doing crafts and things like that. So these are just grade six, grade seven. They're all actually doing separate trips in different parts of Thailand. Okay, moving on. This is one of our favorite activities for RIS, Games Day. On the top left, that's Pre-K Games Day. Uh, the bottom, actually, the first two pictures are Pre-K and Kindergarten Games Day. We have uh, elementary school games day. As it says, the more opportunities to be active, the better for physical development. This is our middle school games day. So as you can see, as Ms. Madeline said, a lot of things are you know, happening at RES simultaneously every day. It's a very full on community life here. We also like to um, encourage our students to respect their elders. I mean, in Thailand, you know, that's one of our, it's one of the things that we value. And on Teacher's Day, we, our Thai department does a very, very, very um, touching tribute to all our teachers in the Thai way. This is um, our students giving uh, wreaths to our assistant high, uh, elementary school principal, for example. We also celebrate 100 days of school <laughs> here. <laughs> and touching on what Miss Madeline was talking about earlier, um, our after school extended day program. The, um, what you're seeing here are pictures from the EDP fair. This is an opportunity for our parents to come together to see the programs we have on offer. Um, a lot of these programs can be run by our teachers or our outsourced vendors, but they're really an extension of what um, the RS curriculum already offers. So for example, there are robotics uh, classes, there are board games and, and whatnot, chess, so many. They're everything that you know um, the school offers during the day from music to sports to academics, um, there are enrichment programs, uh, enrichment courses within the, the extended day program. Okay, moving on to high school student life. 
So in these pictures, you're going to see these are images from our Greater Bangkok University Fair and our Thai College Fair. High school student life. Um, this is organized by our awesome high school counseling office. We are uh, college preparatory. And um, here, the what I like about our high school counseling office is their philosophy is very much about best fit. You know, um, what is the great, the, what is the best fit for your child as opposed to going to the most prestigious or most, you know, famous university here, they try to encourage that this place really fits your needs and your passions. So moving on, I'm just gonna breeze through high school life. Um, over here, it's a tradition since the 60s that we always honor our senior class. And so we have this uh, annual tradition, senior convocation. We have a pin that we, uh, in, a, in a ceremony that we hand out to our seniors. And it's a day when they're officially recognized as seniors by the entire school. So over here, just images from that special day. It's a big photo op for our parent community. Uh, moving on, I'm just going to touch and breeze through some, some other aspects of high school extracurricular life. This is community um, games day for high school. Um, every year we have our, our senior class pose a picture with a, with a number over here. As you can see, everyone's wearing a different color because every every high school class, 9, 10, 11, 12, ha, um, has color themes. Uh, moving on, this is an example of our students celebrating Chinese New Year, celebrating Songkran. This is just a little of them out on the field. Over here, we have our ninth graders in learning about agriculture and Patum Tani. We have our IB year one and year two biology class, I believe this is in Kaoyai, doing coursework, <laughs> getting their hands dirty. Um, service learning. Um, the picture you see on the left is our annual walk and runathon event, which um, supports the Ban Nokamin Orphanage, I believe. Uh, on the right, we have give hair, give care to support wigs for cancer patients. These are just two of the many, many <laughs> service learning opportunities at RIS. I know that's a lot of information here. So um, extracurricular activities, not really just for high school, but pretty much whole school. These are just examples of our students playing basketball, touch rugby, volleyball, tennis. Um, we have just hosted the CSAC for basketball and touch rugby this year. Um, moving on, arts and music. These are images from a production of The Little Mermaid that we just held and some pictures from our IB art program. And finally, closing off the school year, we have summer school in June. These are images from last year's summer school. So again, it's, it's, it's a continuation of things that we already offered during the regular school year. So here we have art, we have um, academics. I believe the, it, that's a, a shot from the psychology class. Um, cooking, <laughs> yoga, <laughs> science. And finally, these are pictures from our foundation day, which is our school birthday. This year, we, we are currently celebrating our 65th year in education. And again, I hope that through all these pictures, you could see how everything that is planned, we try to incorporate a little bit of head, hands, heart in all that we do. Principles of Phoenix, head, knowledge, hand, skills, heart, values. I hope that made sense within 10 minutes. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you for uh, giving us that. That was a fantastic presentation. I really, uh, I really appreciate it. <laughs> I want to thank put you. it back up here, who you are. Uh, Mr. Michael, thank you so much for the presentation today. Um, My pleasure. We will direct everyone who has questions about RES to you, and um, <laughs> we'll go from there. All right. Thank you. Have a wonderful day. You too. Thanks for having us. Where do you come? How do you come? I want to also remind everyone that Remrudy uh, RIS or RIS, sorry, a Remrudy International School has also offered a special promotion to everyone who is registered for the BKK Kids Virtual Summit this year. And you can see it's a 50,000 bot off the registration fee uh, for anyone who is a registrant of this summit. And so um, as you saw, Mr. Uh, Mr. Michael over there, you know, you can contact him and say, hey, look, I want my 50,000 bot off and we'll go from there. Um, our next school, it's time to move on here, is 
Unity Concord International School. So let me give you a little bit of background on Unity. Unity Concord International School Chiang Mai was opened in 2017 by Amporn and Chugate Garmal. Oh boy. I'm not going to even try to pronounce their family name. I apologize. That family, they are award-winning teachers and school administrators with more than 33 years of experience as educators. The other schools operated by Umporn and Chogut are the Americana Chinese School, a Chinese International School with 334 students currently enrolled, British Concordance International School with 56 students currently enrolled, and the Ambassador Bilingual Academy with 337, 337 currently, currently enrolled, the Ambassador Bilingual School with 1,252 students currently enrolled, and the CEC Language and Tutoring School. Unity was founded uh, and opened its doors to students on August 28, 2017, at the time offering pre-kindergarten to grade five with an enrollment of approximately 150 students. This number climbed throughout the year to approximately 220 students and by the end of the second semester. Unity now accepts students from preschool, which is one, point, one and a half years old, to grade 12 and has 958 students currently enrolled. Unity's fourth year of grade 12 graduates consists of 39 students who have been accepted to universities domestically and abroad. And I am super proud and pleased to welcome Heather Ivey to the stage with me. Hello, Heather. How are you today? I'm good, Stephen. How are you? You know, I'm a little embarrassed that I cannot <laughs> pronounce your fa your founder's family name. How do you pronounce it? Again. <laughs> It is Ajahn Amporn and Ajahn Juki at Gamon Gamot. Gamon Gamot. See, I should have known that. I should have practiced. And I. this is, you know, it is shame on me, shame on my face for not being able to do that. But moving on, uh, yes. Heather, th thanks for joining us. As I've offered to everyone who has presented here uh, th throughout the day, as well as yesterday, you know, why don't you give us your perspective uh, on what does it mean to be at Unity? What, what's the heart of Unity from, from your perspective? So the heart of Unity um, is really our community atmosphere. So for our students and our families to feel like they are one family, uh, kind of tying into the name of the school, Unity Concord, um, they, they do feel that unity, which is, which is very important. Um, mm -hmm. Our motto is creating together. So our students and our parents are able to join in different activities um, throughout the school year to be able to do that. And I think that's the kind of the heart of the school. Oh, fantastic. So tell us about the student body. What, what does it look like up, up there in Chiang Mai? Um, you know, what, what's your diversity look like? Uh, I, but what I just read was that there's essentially a thousand students currently enrolled. Has that number changed Correct. or are you expecting more, et cetera? We are expecting more. Um, 958 is the currently enrolled students that are here on campus at this time. Um, and we do have students that have already uh, pre-registered for next year, uh, as well as students, some students who are coming from Thai schools that will start in April after our, our break to be able to continue the school year and then start the new school year uh, fresh in August of 2023. Um, so our student population, we have over 26 different nationalities. Um, one of the fastest growing nationalities that we have in our school is the Israeli community. We do have a lot of Israeli students coming um, and new students, potential students that are interested in the school contact contacting us. Um, so with over 26 different nationalities, it does bring a very diverse group of students to the school. Mm, absolutely. We have a question already from somebody in the chat here. Uh, Michelle yes. wants to know, I, I see you're part of many schools. As, as, as I read off there, they're, they're, your founders yes. have founded many different schools. Does that Correct. mean that any child would have access to those schools or are they completely separate entities or how does that community of schools work? Yes, so they are completely separate entities in terms of curriculum, uh, the school uh, layout, the teachers, all of those things. However, we have the ability if a student wants to move from one of our schools to another one of our schools, say maybe for they, they're currently in the bilingual program and they want to come to an international school, they can directly go into uh, one of our international schools. So even though they are five separate schools, we are all working close together so that if students do want to move between one and the other, they can, they have that opportunity. Hmm. What about, um, you know, earlier we heard from another Chiang Mai school. I'd, I'd love to hear your perspective on, you know, what does that community look like? So many of the schools that are presenting in our summit this year are from hmm. the Bangkok area 
or just outside right. the bankruptcy area. We, you know, Patia is, is represented, Phuket is represented mm -hmm. as well, but obviously Chiang Mai is a different part of the country. Um, you know, what's that? What's the difference in that community? What are the pros and cons, the benefits that, as, as you see them? So in, in Chiang Mai, because Bangkok is very big, obviously. So the one of the biggest pros is Chiang Mai is much smaller. So when you're coming to Chiang Mai with the population, it's not as large as Bangkok getting around um, to different areas like the malls and the airport. All of those things are fairly close. So it gives uh, a more homey kind of feel than um, the big, big, big cities. Mm, all right, nice. And and how have you when when parents come? Is that a, a a particular reason they say you know hey we're coming here because we want that smaller feel we want that you know the less pressure those types of things or are there other reasons why families are are arriving in Chiang Mai or or, or choose this area? Uh, there's a combination of things. Uh, some of them will come due to work. Uh, their company has sent them to work somewhere here in Chiang Mai. Um, in which case they're looking directly specifically for Chiang Mai. But a lot of them do choose Chiang Mai because it is a smaller city, but it's still accessible and has a lot of interesting um, things that they can do. So I think that's very important and why a lot of uh, parents do choose to come to Chiang Mai. Hmm. We have another question in the chat there. Are there any boarding options at Unity? We do have a boarding option. So it's not a full boarding school, uh, but we do have a boarding uh, facility that is located just next to the school called U Home. Um, mm. And we can take up to uh, students starting from uh, grade one through grade 12 have the option to board there. Um, we have two different options. They can either have their own room or they can have a shared room. So the fees are a little bit different depending on if they're in their own room or uh, sharing a room. Okay, excellent. And talk to me about, uh, you know, uh, extracurricular activities, you know, outside the class, you know, type of situations, you know, what, what, what are you, you know, is there something that you excel in or something that, that, that you are particularly known for? Or, you know, what, are the, what does that menage of things look like? Yeah, so one of the biggest things is sports. Um, because we are a part of CMAC, which competes against other international schools locally here in Chiang Mai, um, we are very competitive in our athletic department in terms of after school sports. Um, so there are different seasons at different times that the students would be able to participate in uh, different sports if they like those sports uh, like soccer, basketball, uh, futsal, track and field. Right now, um, some students are in volleyball. Um, so it allows them the opportunity as young as grade one to be able to participate in after school sports. Uh, additionally, we have after school clubs, which are um, operated throughout the school year. And what we do is we promote those clubs, different types of clubs for our parents to see what interests their children have, and then they can participate in those as well. Give me, give me that like, so what types of clubs do we have? I mean, is it, is it run the gamut of everything from chess to robotics or, or, or what do you, yeah. Uh, it depends. Each year is a little bit different. So we, we have our basic ones that are always going to be included, like the homework club, the computer club, um, the STEM or engineering class, uh, art class and music um, classes or clubs. Those are kind of the standard ones, but then we have more interest um, starting in robotics and things like that. So those would be clubs that we would be adding to our current existing clubs. Super cool. Before we move on to your video for Unity, um, I'm very interested to hear, you know, it, as we heard in the introduction, there's, uh, you know, all of these different schools and it sounds like there's a, a forward thinking vision in terms of continuing to develop and grow the school. So what, yeah. You know, what are you looking forward to as this year closes out, maybe to the 2023-2024 uh, school year in terms of development, new buildings, new facilities, growing the student body, those kinds of things? That is a great question, actually, because we are in the process uh, of a new building being built. It's currently under construction, um, anticipated to be able to be used in August. Um, it will hold 400 more students and it will have a full auditorium. So we would be able to do um, programs and things like that in this new um, building. So it's actually something we're looking forward to for obviously increasing our student population, but also having that extra facility for our students to do more practicing for performing farm, uh, performing fine arts and things like that as well. Super cool. Well, let's move on to watch the video about Unity, and then we're going to come back and actually talk with you about the ambassador program. Is that correct? That's correct. All right. We'll be back in just a, a few minutes, and here's the video for Unity. Oh. 
E oops, I just put myself back on mute. And we're <laughs> back with Hever to yes. actually talk to us about something called the Ambassador Education Group. And so yes. I give the floor to you. I'm very interested to learn about this. All right. Thank you. Uh, so Ambassador Education Group, as you mentioned at the beginning of the um, video, is that we are an education group um, and the school founders, Ajahn Amporn and Ajahn Juki at Kamon Kamot, actually established this over 33 years ago uh, with the vision of being able to offer different um, programs within schools for, for different needs within our, our families and community. So throughout AEG, um, we have three international schools. Two of them um, use the American curriculum, Unity Concord International School, which we've, we've spoke about in quite detail. Uh, the other one is Americana Chinese International School. Now, Americana Chinese International School focuses on um, American curriculum, but off, also offers Chinese as a second language. So all of our students get one class period of Chinese per day. Um, and they're able to extend their, their language abilities from not just Thai and English, but also Chinese. Um, and they also have an, a pretty extensive STEM lab, which allows the students to be very creative when they're working in the STEM lab. Um, a fantastic STEM teacher uh, who challenges the students to create different types of projects. And it's really exciting to see when they present those projects. Um, the other school that we have, I know yesterday you guys presented the British curriculum. The other um, international school we have, British Concordance International School, actually is a British curriculum, but it is the newest school under the Ambassador Education Group. So we are um, growing in student numbers right now. Uh, currently, we accept students there from preschool for the early years through year seven, and then we will ex expand later for uh, through year 13. Now, ACIS accepts students from preschool through grade 12. Um, so they're they're accepting students pretty similar to Unity, but the student population is is less on that one. So with the two schools, when we're talking about the Ambassador Education Group for BCIS and ACIS, I know that we put we put up there the five percent tuition discount. Um, that's the standard amongst all of our schools. Uh, however, if someone was interested in ACIS or BCIS, and they mentioned the summit here um, and in the email when they contact, then I can give an additional discount for that. So I just want to mention that because that's solely for three schools, BCIS, ACIS, and one of our bilingual schools, Ambassador Bilingual Academy. Um, now, the two bilingual schools, ABS is the biggest uh, with over 12, uh, 1,200 students. Um, it is a bilingual school that accepts students from preschool through grade 12, and they have had 10 graduating classes already. So this last group that just graduated last month, uh, there were 61 students that graduated, and some of them have been accepted to universities in America, um, also Australia and throughout Thailand as well. So we're really excited to see where those students end up going. And then, of course, um, Ambassador Bilingual Academy, which is, it was formerly Little Stars, and we rebranded uh, to Ambassador Bilingual Academy because we built a new facility. It is a huge facility. Uh, the campus is amazing, um, and it is a bilingual uh, program that accepts students from preschool through grade 12 as well, um, and that's one that I think that when you come to, if you come to see the schools, you'll really like the campus and the spacious facilities that we have there at ABA. So that would be all five of the actual schools that we have, but we also have um, two locations for CEC, which is a language and tutoring school. So we kind of cover everything. We go from bilingual schools, international schools, right on to being able to study languages or also uh, tutoring for students that want to do uh, tutoring for IELTS, for the SATs, um, HS HSK for Chinese students, and then also foreign languages. So we do Thai as a foreign language, but we also offer Chinese, French, Spanish, um, and Russian. So there is a lot of options for people who are interested in um, joining or learning more about any of our schools. Now, I would like to say right now um, for our bilingual schools, ABA and ABS, they are currently doing their summer camp program. And we do have special promotions for the summer camp if somebody wants to come and try 
the summer camp first to see if they want to join the school later. Um, they're doing summer camp from now through April. So if, if there is somebody who's interested and they mention again, that they mentioned for that they attended or watched the summit, then I will be able to give a discount on, on that. And then for uh, Unity, ACIS and BCIS, we have our summer camp in July. Um, and the summer camp is a four week program. And um, it's an opportunity because for, for international schools, we don't accept students for short term. So the only time that they can come and see if they like the school and try it is during our summer camp program. So it's a time that they can kind of see the campus, be able to see the community, the atmosphere and attend the summer camp programs. And we've got some pretty exciting summer camps this year. Fantastic. That's great. I was actually just going to ask, do you like what what would the what would the student body of like a, of, of a summer camp look like? Is it a 100 students? Is it a couple hundred? Is it like what are we looking at? Uh, the goal is um, before COVID, we had between six and eight hundred students for the oh. international schools. Um, now I'm for the international schools. That specifically, I'm looking at unity for that number. Um, mm -hmm. But for ABS and ABA, the bilingual schools, between two and 300 students for a summer camp. Okay, awesome. That, I, 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 I really was interested in knowing that because as you said, that short term, that taster kind of yeah. piece, I think would be is a really interesting thing, especially for those of us in sort of the international lifestyle. I mean, like that. Well, yeah. Thank you very much, Heather, for explaining the Ambassador Education Group to us. I, I definitely put some perspective on it. And I got to be honest with you, that is a very comprehensive offering. And so I hope it that um, with the additional promotion that you just put there, I'm actually going to put your promotion on the screen right now. So I'm going to thank okay. you for joining us today and thank you for your time. But then I'm going to put the promotion up on the screen and I'll explain it to everybody. All right. Thank you, Stephen. Have a great day. You too. And so as you heard, um, Unity Concord International School as well, if you are registered for the uh, virtual school summit here, <clears throat> they're offering you a 5% off their tuition fee. Uh, and then as Heather just said, that if you, you know, if you send her an email, maybe mention this, maybe mention this virtual summit, she has the ability to maybe give you a little bit more there as well. So that's a very exciting uh, opportunity now through March 31st, uh, 2023. So thank you very much to Unity for that. And thank you very much to Heather for her presentation. Now it's time to bring our next school up, which is the American School of Bangkok in Super, Bangkok in Superbit, excuse me, established for nearly 40 years. The American School of Bangkok Sukhumvit is a highly regarded international school in Thailand, which propels students to excellence in an American curriculum with an international perspective. It features rigorous academic programs, advanced placement courses, and capstone diploma offered and capstone diploma uh, offered that have created educational pathways to academic success for almost four decades. The school curriculum continuously integrates the necessary innovation for students to become exemplary scholars today and successful leaders of tomorrow. The school just partnered with XCL Education, a forward-thinking premier education group in Southeast Asia. XCL Education will bring experienced educators to the ASB administrative team, significant upgrades to the school facilities, innovations to school programs, and increased opportunities for students. And now here's a quick glimpse of the middle school teaching and learning at ASB. So I am bringing up now, with no further ado, Dr. Jenny Sabin. Is it Sabine? Sabin? Sabin? Sabin, like the Sabin. football right. coach in the United States. <laughs> All right. I, you know, it's the emphasis on the wrong syllable. That's what that was. Exactly. Yeah. Dr. Jenny, it's so nice to meet you. Uh, thank you for, you know, taking time out of your day to talk to us as a school principal over there at American. I, you know, I, I've seen your signs, you know, out there. So as I've offered to others, um, I would love for, to give you the opportunity, you know, rather than what I just read out about American school, what does it mean to you to be at the school? What's the heart of the school for you? And, and, you know, what is it that you espouse to people when you meet them? Yeah, so I think that's a, a great, there's the formal piece that you read off. That's the, you'll see in our promotional, um, you know, uh, literature and that, that that talks about a lot of great things, but it is a community. I know you're going to hear that in many places, but uh, as an American school, we've got that American curriculum. We, we're the school of leaders. So in much the same way that I think 
um, Americans often are are quick to jump in and and uh, and you know step into the limelight and speak up and those kinds of things. We are really channeling that in an academic setting in a way that empowers our kids to be leaders, to lead flag in the morning or perform for their peers or lead morning meeting and, and those kinds of things. We want to give our students not just the academic knowledge that they need, but also the application into the real world and why you know what we're learning about in um, you know water quality matters for our community, not just sixth grades doing a, a great project where they're, they've gone and tested water samples in different places around Bangkok. And so it's not just about the number of, you know, uh, sulfates that they find in the water, but it's actually about what does that mean for our community? How do we make the world a better place and how do we lead? Uh, and what's our place in doing that? And I think, you know, um, there's grades and certainly all of those good American things that we need and we're preparing kids for college, but the the so what of being a good human being goes far beyond that, I think. Mm. So tell me about the human beings that are there. What's the diversity on the campus? What's this? What's the size of your student body? What is it? What's the actual yeah. campus look like if I walk on? So we're uh, nursery all the way to grade 12, and we have around 530 students, 528 today, actually. Um, and our students really are quite diverse, 42 countries. Um, and I would say that is a, a representation of where we are in the city in particular, right? So uh, between Sukhumvit 39 and 49, and it's right in the heart of things. So, uh, you know, I, I live close enough nearby that I get to see our, our students and our families outside of school hours. But it is a representation and a reflection of the community here in Bangkok. So we have many embassy students that are here, but we also have, you know, a, a lot of, uh, we have, I think we're about 20% Thai. Um, and we do a lot of those um, holiday celebrations. So I think I've heard this with some of the other schools. We want, you know, families that come here to also recognize that, you know, what is Y crew? What is that? And, and why do we celebrate that in Thailand? And what is Songkran and what are the, you know, maybe some of the, the dance pieces that you can, you know, get, get those cultural pieces in there too, but we celebrate American holidays. So mm. our, our, I was going to ask um, you, do you get the turkey on the table? We sure do. <laughs> Come Thanksgiving, we have the International Food Fiesta and we always carve up a few turkeys. So uh, last year, my husband was the one who made all the sweet potato pies. So nice. <laughs> it oh, is a, a very international context. And I would tell you, um, you know, it, I am principal, but I also am the parent of two children here. I think it's a, a wonderful environment for kids to come and learn um, about themselves, but also about the world and the diversity that they will grow up and be a part of. Oh, I just want to make sure that you're still there. Okay. Sorry. I just had a little, little hiccup in the internet. Um, no so, yeah. One, you know, you were, you were in the, in the green room while we were talking with our last speaker about Unity Concord. You know, mm -hmm. juxtapose for me, you know, the advantages, the opportunities and whatnot of being right in the heart of Sukhumvit, one of these, you know, dense neighborhoods in giant Bangkok, as a, you know, as opposed to other parts of Bangkok, outside Phuket, Chiang Mai, those kinds of things. So, you know, the benefit of being right in the city is what you can get to, right? So we are going to be a smaller campus in terms of physical size. We, we think maybe more efficiently about our fields and our sports complex and, and those kinds of things. Uh, but I briefly said, you know, the sixth grade is working on water quality. They went to Klong Toy Market and interviewed people there about water usage and, and did a water sample. They ran up to uh, Queen Syracuse Park and, and took some water samples there. They, the things that we can get to because we're right here in the city are immense, right? So they went to six locations in a day. Second grade is um, studying agricultural practices. Right. So they went to an urban farm mm. uh, yesterday, in fact. And so looking at those pieces of what can our students get to that go beyond the walls of the classroom? It's great when they can do math and a workbook, but when they actually can see, oh, how many seeds do we plant if there's 15 rows of cucumbers, right? Like if we know that 10% of those aren't going to grow, how many do we need to purchase and buy for? And, and understanding that um, the learning has application beyond when you're in a context of 10 million people up close and personal as your neighbors, you really have access to getting to those things. So from performances, you know, at M. Cortier, our students sometimes go over and, and have musical performances or dance performances to the academic uh, connections for field trips and um, our design tech. I think it's our high school design tech um, took on a project in our local um, like street cart community um, to help them design their menus and translate them as a service project. So outside of school hours, beyond just making a logo for them, 
helping to translate that and make it um, a, a better business application for the, the local community that's near us, but also make it more international and use all the languages that our student body helps to represent. Fantastic. Yeah. We have a question from you in our chat from Jacqueline, actually two of them. So the first one is, does the school have any plans to offer IB as well or yeah. as well AP levels? Yeah, so we do offer AP right now. Um, the, you, in the intro, you briefly hit on the capstone program. So anyone who might have either taken APs or heard about it, uh, an AP course is basically a college level course that students can um, actually take the course and get credit for uh, based on an exam at the end of the school year that goes towards college credit. So if you're a parent trying to maybe not pay for four years of uh, university or maybe help with a couple of those classes, we, students can front load that work um, while they're here in high school. So AP courses definitely are a leg up into what college expectations are and helping with credit. We offer the capstone program, which means students can take four uh, content classes and then AP research and seminar, and they can graduate with an additional diploma, which is an actually an AP diploma on top of their ASB diploma. Colleges look really highly on this. Those students are highly competitive um, and get into great universities in America, but also in many other countries because they know how rigorous the program is. We do not have any plans for IB. Um, at this point, we have researched and looked into those things uh, before. Our high school student body is around 140 students. So right now, based on our enrollment, AP suits our needs really well. The, the jump into offering um, IB and AP would take a significantly larger student body, um, which you might find at other schools. But in general, you'll find most schools are either AP or IB. And um, speaking from a school that offers AP, I would tell you the benefit is you might have a child who's passionate in uh, biology, you know, who wants to go pre-med and taking AP biology is a great fit for them but they're not going to take an AP language. Maybe that's not their thing or AP world history. You can choose to take AP courses that are just in your area of strength, right? Mm -hmm. You don't have to go for that capstone diploma. So um, IB often is really rigorous and we know many other schools offer, offer great programs in that, but they are different programs and kind of understanding um, we won't be shifting or transitioning to that. We're definitely in the, the AP lane and the American uh, curriculum. Fantastic. Thanks. That was a very complete answer. Thanks. It is great to know about the capstone course. I'm kind of remiss that I don't have my 14 year old in those right now. Um, the, another, the, the second question from Jacqueline is um, your school's in the middle of Bangkok. And so how does, what does that mean for sports facilities and opportunities around that? That's a great question. It's like Jacqueline teed me right up there. Uh, so <laughs> we, we do have in the past two and a half academic years, we've really renovated a, a good chunk of campus. Um, not all of it is in the athletic world, but I'll answer the question and kind of hit on those. So uh, we have a great AstroTurf field, um, which for this part of the city really is uh, quite unique. It's large, it gets used all the time. Um, we've used our other spaces um, very cautiously. We built a new elementary building, a four-story elementary building, and we added a basketball court on top, mm -hmm. right? So instead of having empty space up there, we're using some of those things kind of to our advantage. Um, in addition, last April, we opened a six-story sports complex. So when you think about this part of the city, we have a pool on the bottom, a running track on the second floor, a two-story basketball and gymnasium that's volleyball and badminton and all great things, um, and then a floor for health and PE. So you've got a whole floor for classrooms so that all of that um, physical education stuff happens in one place, and tennis courts on the roof there. On the sixth floor. So really, I, I would tell you our athletics, I like to think of it as the, the AAA. So you get to see academics, athletics, mm -hmm. um, and arts. And, and I would tell you that athletics piece, especially coming out of COVID, our kids are competitive and ready to get out there and, and similar to other schools. So we're in ASAC and our ASA, excuse me, and we um, are going to have three seasons of sports. Our sports start as young as second grade, right? So in the younger grade levels, you're learning a lot of core skills, right? Like coordination and how to kick the ball or how to, you know, do some of those things. And then certainly by JV and varsity sports, we're highly competitive uh, doing tournaments within our, um, our division, but also looking for other opportunities. So our kids 
Um, our volleyball went to uh, Pattaya and had a, a big competition there with another series of schools. So lots of great athletic opportunities for our kids. It's uh, one of the big, busiest schedules that we have on campus is the athletics for sure. I'm sure, absolutely. And what about your arts program? Is there a full theater there and do you do the musicals and all that stuff as well? Of course. So we have a, a great theater that's uh, the top story of our middle school building. Um, and we offer two different musicals. So this year we're doing uh, Little Mermaid, which I saw a little bit earlier from another school, um, and Encanto. So we really offer that's broken by age division. Um, but our kids are singing and doing drama and dancing uh, and getting out to do those things. And um, our, our visual arts team is helping with the backdrops and props and those kinds of things. So it really is a wraparound. Not everybody wants to be on stage. Sometimes you have the tech folks who are more interested in the technology aspect to that. And I would tell you there's great crossover between our design tech and our arts folks to um, you know, integrate and, and explore passions for our kids. Again, when we talk about those real world applications, you know, it's not just that I design something for my technology class, but that I know how to run lights for a musical or a soundboard or those kinds of things. So, uh, yeah, we do musicals and our, our kids are stars of the show for sure. Fantastic. Talk to me about the, as I was reading um, the interest, what is the XCL education group and how does that play into um, ASB? Yeah, so I actually jotted it down. We just say it as though you're saying the, Excel. the word Excel. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> yep. I, I didn't want to chance it because, you know, you never know. Right, if you get it wrong, you're, 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 you're fine, Stephen. So uh, Excel's been a great partnership for us. So uh, a little bit of what I'll go to Design Tech as one specific example, but they are a, a grouping of schools then that are all in Southeast Asia. We're the um, first partnership um, here in Thailand. Um, and basically what they allow us to do is partner with other schools. So, hey, we're um, doing VEX robotics competitions. Our kids went to nationals this year, right? We're super excited and proud, but we want to do some other, you know, competitions or share that knowledge as a grouping of schools. And so uh, we've been able to reach out. There's a, a, a garage studio um, of the robotics in, in the school in Singapore. And so we've been able to uh, video chat our kids together and share some of those resources and ideas. Uh, we have kids in June who are going uh, to an Excel's Got Talent. So our kids from an artistic standpoint get to kind of the same way you would see, you know, Britain's Got Talent or America's Got Talent. Our kids, we did a competition here on campus. I got to be a judge and see a phenomenal number of students showing their gifts. Uh, and then we'll uh, send them off to Singapore to compete against other Excel schools. And we'll have a mirrored activity uh, for athletics. So it's like a decathlon. We'll send teams uh, over to compete against one another in June for athletic competition. So it becomes another layer of the school community, right? So we have other partner schools that we can join in and share resources and knowledge and professional learning with uh, when we talk about job alikes and those things. So uh, it doesn't change our day to day here so much, but it is uh, nice to be part of a larger community that we can tap into. Fantastic. So final question for you before we move on to your video, yeah. as a school that I mean, you've really characterized it well that you don't seem confined by the, you know, you can't expand, right? You're in a place that's, that's developed. Mm -hmm. So what, you know, what is the near term, the, the 12 months, the 18 months in terms of new building development, expansion of the, of the campus or the student body or, you know, continued growth of the school, or maybe those aren't on the, on the table. Yeah, so I would say we cap we captured a lot of that COVID time to do a lot of the upgrades. So we now are growing into the space that we've built for ourselves. So the elementary building, every floor right now, I have one or two classrooms that are still, they're overflow rooms. We're using them when we wanna break out in small rooms or small groups, right? I, we're not using every single classroom the way that we know we'll be able to when our uh, enrollment jumps, uh, probably another chunk here. So we've grown last year into this year by probably more than a hundred students. Wow. Um, and we want to continue that growth into next year. We have the space here on campus. And so a lot of that push for us in that next 12 to 18 months is to tell folks around about the great facilities that we have for them to come and see them and, and come join our community. So I think um, we'll continue to, you know, upgrade the playground and add, you know, more sports equipment and, and those kinds of things. But it really will be more about um, getting folks into our community so that we can use the spaces that we have. 
Fantastic. Dr. Jenny, this has been a fantastic conversation. Thank you for telling us about American and we'll move on to your uh, video now, but thank you so much and have a wonderful day. Thanks, Stephen. You too. Hello, and welcome to Middle School at the American School of Bangkok. Students in middle school are introduced to a meticulous subject-based system and learn directly from specialized teachers who teach in their academic subjects. Homeroom teachers provide guidance and direction for the students throughout the transitional years. Middle school students have lots of fun participating in hands-on activities, exciting projects, and engaging presentations to the community. Middle school students have the opportunity to participate in an overnight school field trip, which brings students together in a bonding and learning situation. In middle school, students can further develop their leadership skills by participating in a wide variety of activities, including the student council and service learning opportunities. Uh, I went to the VEX robotics competition. We had to prepare for like half a month. We built our robots and then we went there. There are 40 schools that are competing. Our 8th grade team placed 4th. The experience was pretty fun. We get to socialize with other schools and also like strategize on how we got to play on the field and I really liked it. We have done many varieties of games for people to enjoy and right now um, Student Council has been doing a Valentine's event where we um, give cards to people and let them write who they um, like or um, for a friend and then we deliver them to their homerooms on Valentine's Day. All of our core classes are very unique. We have unique teachers and all of their lessons are always fun and engaging. In math, we do group rotating, so everybody kind of does different parts. In science, we always do labs and it's always really fun to try out different experiments. And then in humanities, we have group work together and we just all get to work together and it's always really fun. The Junior Varsity Sports Department is very entertaining. It has basketball, soccer, and volleyball. The basketball is very fun because we have a good coach and good teammates. For the soccer aspect of it, it was really fun to play with everyone to collaborate. And I think throughout the season, we really bonded together. Um, I feel like this was a great year overall. I like art because it's like, inspiring people and you could do so many colorful things like this. In Dance Elective, we get to choose a song by vote and then if we don't know any dance move, we can ask the teacher and she'll help us one move by one move. And then um, in special events like Christmas, Food Fiesta and Valentine's, we get to do those songs and perform. During overnight field trips, we get to go to a location and we get to bunk with our friends. And every day we go and do different educational and fun activities where we learn different life skills and have a bunch of fun. We also have meals with the, all of middle school and enjoy staying with everybody while we have a learning experience for three days. Fantastic. And the, as, as several of the schools have had here on the virtual summit, uh, we, the American School of Bangkok, the Sukhumvit campus, also has a promotion uh, for people who have registered for the summit this year. And you can see here on your screen right now, the promotion is the a full registration fee waived if you mentioned that you saw it here on the virtual school summit. So I don't think that you uh, go right to Dr. Jenny, but you can contact the American School of Bangkok uh, admission staff and, and tell them that we sent you there, which is absolutely fantastic. And it's now time to bring up our next school. And our next school is D-Prep. D-Prep is an American curriculum international school that follows a truly innovative pedagogy of experiential learning in which students get to learn through inquiry-based learning and direct hands-on experience. 
Our, the Deep Prep offers nursery to grade nine for the 2023-24 academic school year, and they will be offering up to all high school grades at their upcoming high school campus for the 2024-25 school year. Ooh, I'm very excited to hear about these developments. And so without further ado, I am going to bring Hi. Lady on, onto the screen here. Now, we Hello. also have another presenter, so we could bring Mari Carr on, or do you, how would you like to have this right. Q&A session? That's all right. It can just be me. Don't worry. Okay. Yeah. No, okay. I, 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 I apologize. The way that our overlays work there, I, I noticed that you were both on two cameras there. So, no worries. Okay, excellent. So, Kun Lady, thank you very much for joining me today. Um, again, as I have offered to all of the other presenters uh, in their, uh, uh, as the initial question for them, we just heard, you know, sort of your official sort of marketing speak. But tell me from your perspective, you know, what is the heart of Deep Prep? What do you take away from campus every day? Or, you know, what's the ethos that you're putting out there in the universe? So um, our most important, I would say unique um, uh, thing about us is that we focus very much on blending academics um, with creativity and life skills. Um, and so it is here where the students really get to be themselves. Um, they are so happy to come to school. Um, they, a lot of them don't want to leave. Um, they do projects, you know, every day. And so they're out there experimenting inside the classroom, outside. So it's really learning by um, experimenting and hands-on learning. So, you know, because of that, they, they, the kids feel um, passionate that, about learning and all the different subjects. And so we feel that it, teaching and learning this way allows children to uh, succeed academically, but at the same time, also develop all those important skills like critical thinking and collaboration and teamwork, um, complex problem solving, create, um, creative thinking. So all those soft skills that we feel it's really, really important in today's world. As you know, there's so much change going on, all the industries, um, the way we live, the way we parent, it's so different than say 20 years ago. So we're trying to uh, make sure that the pedagogy is much more um, student friendly, child friendly, and in a it, it speaks a language that kids can understand. So, for example, we really integrate um, digital literacy, you know, using the iPads and Chromebooks and also um, the coding stuff or the electric circuits. Um, all of that is integrated into the projects um, that the kids are doing. They're, they're recording their voices. They're doing video editing. So we really try to teach through so many um, a variety of mediums. And so, you know, hopefully to, to create balanced learners who enjoy coming to school. Fantastic. So tell me about that, that student population. Um, how big is it? What's the, you know, what's the size so, of it? And then so what kind of diversity do you have? Sure. So I think we're, um, uh, it's your, our location. We're in a located inside of the mega Bangna community. No, we are not inside the shopping mall. I was just saying, <laughs> can I, can, can I also go get inside the shopping mall at the same time? No, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. So it's actually behind Ikea. Um, but it's in the community of Mega Bangna. And I think around here, you know, the population around here is still largely Thai, the neighborhoods. So I would say that 70% um, to 80 are, you know, mostly Thai families. We have around 20-ish percent of kids, um, you know, who are uh, from Korea or are mixed nationalities. Um, but it is increasing. We are seeing uh, more of a trend in, in terms of like various nationalities in the last one to two years. Um, and so I think given our population, uh, we, we understand that Thai and Chinese are languages are quite important to our families here. So, you know, um, like any other international school, we are required to, to be teaching Thai, but we do have that third language of Chinese um, built into the schedule from kindergarten onwards. Mm, fantastic. Mm. What about, we have a question from one of our, uh, our participants and can you tell me more about your new campus and what would be sure. different from the original campus? So that is super exciting. Right now, our current campus um, goes up to grade eight. Um, next school year, we will have grade nine still here as we are. We actually just had a groundbreaking ceremony this morning. Uh, so construction is starting any day now. It's two minutes away from the current campus. So super nearby car. Um, and it, you know, you don't have to go out onto the Bangna Road. So no traffic at all. So if parents have siblings or anything like that in the two different sections of the school, it should take them roughly two 
two minutes to get there. So the new campus will be um, for middle school and higher um, grade levels. And we will be opening up to grade 12 um, for 2024 to 2025 school year. Yep. Wow. So that's Great. upcoming. Yeah, we're really excited. And we've released some of those uh, perspectives and images of the new campus design, you know, online as well. So um, a lot of our uh, parents are super excited about it. 100%. Uh, another question that just came in right now is, is Thai spoken in the playgrounds as it worries me? My kids do not speak Thai. Um, no, actually, if well, if they are, especially if they've been in with us since kindergarten and nursery, actually, the kids speak in, in, in English as their go to language as their first language, actually. Um, we have some students who come from, uh, say, who transferred from Thai schools. Um, and so in our older grades, um, there is uh, we don't force everyone to speak English, but there is a high encouragement to speak English all the time at school. But we are because we're an IB school and IB really appreciates the diversity in terms of language. So we don't um, we're not you know cracking down on every kid who speaks Thai during lunch. Um, but for sure, we have a strong encouragement and reminding them um, to please use English as often as they can. But we're kind of a little bit more relaxed um, during lunch. Um, time, but if they're like I said, if they're younger and they, they grew up with us, definitely they would be speaking to each other in English. Excellent. Mm -hmm. As a school that's going through grade nine right now, tell me about uh, things outside the classroom uh, or in terms of sure. opportunities, extracurriculars, yeah. after school, that kind of stuff. Sure. So um, one thing that I really am excited about is that our high school will be a model. I would. I'm, I'm not sure, but we might be the first school to have something that's called an internship, a work internship program starting grade 10. So grade nine would be kind of like preparation for the kids in terms of how they will behave, what kind of um, expectations will we will have of them when they actually go out for internships, which we are still, you know, working on the logistics of that. It could possibly look like every Friday afternoon is when they're required to go to a nearby, um, you know, uh, company. Um, it could be a hospital, it could be a, um, a bank, it could be businesses that are around the school area. In terms of that, we will be requiring um, 150 hours of internships for graduation. Oh. And so <laughs> we're pretty serious about it because mm -hmm. we're, um, we're really, we've, I've built this school based on the life skills and the career component because I felt, Growing up, um, when I went to school, I felt like, and a lot of the people in our generation or the older generation, we didn't really have hands-on experience in, in anywhere outside the classroom. Mm -hmm. So a lot of us as parents, we chose our college majors based on what we think um, would work or what our parents told us we need to uh, study. And then what ends up happening is that we don't actually get to work in what we studied, which I feel personally that it's um, it's a huge waste of time, money and investment. And so now that it's, you know, the new generation, I'm building, I built this school with the purpose of making sure that the kids are able to learn through experience. They are interning in different companies. They do field work all the time, going out to interview industry experts from all industries so that they can have like this kind of um, a lot of opportunities to to find out what they're good at, what they love. And so starting grade eight, we actually start preparing them for um, like career preparation, thinking of, about their passions. Grade nine, we prepare them to actually go out into these companies that we've set up for them. Uh, grade 10 and 11 are the, the real internship experiences as they start to choose the majors that they would be applying for college or where they would be going. And I think one of the most um, important elements for us as a school is that if we plan early on, the kids can have a voice in terms of their career, but also university of choice. And we always tell parents to never cut out any opportunities because if, it, if we plan early on and the kids are involved, you should we should be able to get scholarships for our kids anywhere around the world. But mm -hmm. the kids have to be in it like they have to they have to, um, you know, uh, make that as their ambition and their goal in order for that to happen. So uh, for us, it could be financial based, it could be merit based, it could be talent based. But I think what we really stand for as a school is that we believe in the kids um, potential and students potential. And if that is um, happening early enough, all kinds of, um, you know, there are all kinds of possibilities for their future.
Mm. So we're a very kind of like practical, um, you know, where we, we plan, we create that learning experience that will result in practical, um, achievable benefits for our kids. But at the same time, we do push kids academically um, and experientially as well. Fantastic. Uh, final question for you before we move on to your video is what, you know, what, what's the parent interaction with the school at this stage right now? And, and is, especially uh, since you have, since you have these two campuses that you're, you're building at the same time, is it, you know, do you regularly have parents on campus? Are they there for lunch? Are they intermixing with me or sure, is it more sure. of a commuter? Um, I would tell you that uh, DPREP has a very, um, very involved parent community. These are parents who um, who want a different kind of education, educational experience for their children. Um, they didn't like the way they went to school. So they want mm -hmm. to have, um, they want the school to feel like a family. So we welcome families um, so often into, you know, to collaborate in terms of school events, in the learning, in the professional development. Um, we don't, parents, we don't allow the hanging out during the day, but we're very open after school and they are playing sports with their kids. In our new campus, we're actually going to have a designated parent cafe where we actually encourage parents to be coming and having meetings or working like a Starbucks, you know, kind of, kind of feel, because we feel that once the parents um, are part of the learning community, the kids feel that and they feel, um, they feel very relaxed and there's kind of this very um, casual atmosphere and so home it feels like a second home pretty much for most of our families for example so we had to, we just had sports day and we had i think like of all the the games we had parent games for for pretty much you know each of the different type of games and the kids really had fun when they saw their parents playing with them mm. so i would say that if you are if you're a parent who kind of really want to be involved and um, want a different kind of uh, experience for your kids, I think I think we're a really, really um, a good potential school for your family. Fantastic. On that note, yeah. let's uh, thank Kapkun Krab for you know sharing yeah. your experience here, Kun Lady, and uh, I wish you a very, very good day. And uh, thank you so much for taking time out uh, in your obviously your very busy day running that school. And um, we'll now move on to your video presentation. Thank you. Thank you so much, Mr. Steven. Mm. Have a great day. You too.
And once again, thank you to the D-Prep team for uh, joining us today. They also have a promotion here at the 2023 Virtual School Summit. And you can see here on your screen right now, that promotion is a full registration fee waived if you mention the Virtual School Summit when you contact them. Um, and um, we hope you do if you're interested in that school. So thank you very much to them. We are now going to move on to our last school for the day here in the American International Baccalaureate and Kindergarten Curriculum Day. And that school is Verso International. <clears throat> Verso is an innovative international school from early years two to grade 12 that focuses on future ready skills, preparing students for the dynamically evolving landscape their futures will bring. Verso follows an American curriculum that emphasizes interdisciplinary, project-based, and personalized learning. With a wide range of subjects, courses, and electives, students can dive deeply into exciting disciplines and emerging technologies and embrace the interconnectivity of the world of tomorrow. As of the 2023-24 academic year, specific advanced, places, advanced placement courses will be available for high school students who wish to supplement their pathway using university-level material through single-subject courses. Some of the STEAM-based AP courses include physics, biology, 2D art, computer science, statistics, and calculus. And without further ado, I give you the video presentation for Verso. We copy you down. Listen, the future is calling. It's time to get ready. Our innovative American curriculum ensures every graduate has a network of mentors, a dynamic portfolio of real-world experiences, a toolkit of future-ready skills, and the mindset of a citizen designer. We're a community that understands learning by doing, and that learning often means doing things again, and sometimes again. Across the school, we're immersed in rigorous interdisciplinary projects supported by a talented team of international learning designers. From the very start of their school journey, we nurture independent, self-directed learners with a deep sense of who they are and how they can contribute positively to the world around them. We care about people and solving problems in creative, collaborative ways. At Verso, we're preparing for the future. This is my end of what the sea world. This is my swimming pool. This is my dance studio. This is my makerspace. This is my learning space. This is my project. Can't wait for you to visit our school. We inspire everyone to be future ready. Come and find out more. Book a private tour. And there you have it, folks. That is our final school for the second of two days of our 2023 Virtual School Summit. This is our third year. Couldn't have been happier and more pleased for everyone who joined us. Thank you for everyone for their questions and for all the presenters for you know participating and giving those unique perspectives on the differences between the schools, because every school is that unique experience overall. The schools that we saw today were a part of the American curriculum, IB World Schools and Kindergartens. Yesterday, we saw um, you know, schools from the British curriculum as well. So you can see the logos of all those schools. But today, these are the schools that we were able to take part in. And you know, this, this presentation will also be available as a recording for you to review as well. There have been a ton of great promotions. Uh, so I encourage you to go back and review what those promotions were in terms of each school, and there, some of them are offering full, you know, uh, admission uh, waivers, some tuition benefits, and and everything in between. So make sure you go and you check out those different uh, opportunities for the people who have registered for this virtual school summit. As a final note, 
just remember, you know, I'm from BKK Kids and we all, you know, we do this not as a public service, but because we care about this community. We, you know, this is a service we've been offering for you know more than a decade now. Um, this particular virtual summit is our third summit, but we have a lot of different resources that you can use. The first of which is our activity and camp guide. Uh, our 22, 2022 version is still available, but you know our 2023 version will be available in just a few short weeks. So head over to bkkkids.com or changmai.kids.com, throw in your email, and we can send it to you for free. Second, uh, you know, our flagship product, something that you know, we're all very, very super proud of, we've been doing this for more than a decade, is our uh, 2023 BKK Kids International School Guide. This is 150 pages of incredible information, not only about the schools, but, you know, about the different curriculum, about different ways to prepare for, you know, education in Bangkok and whatnot. But as you go through each of the schools, you know, you'll find all that essential information around tuition, around, you um, uh, ECAs and, and different opportunities uh, for, for learning pathways uh, around uh, curriculum, et cetera, et cetera. Each school will have a complete set of information. And then finally, I uh, don't have a slide for this as well, but I want to make sure that we also put on the table our uh, school selector service. And so if you are coming to Bangkok or you're interested in switching schools um, and you're not quite sure what you what you're looking for or you maybe don't have the time to, to select the right school for you. We actually offer a white glove service um, that actually, you know, you tell us what your needs are, what your preferences are, the type of click curriculum, the setting, et cetera. And we will actually go out and present you with the schools that best match your needs and, and help you to apply and connect you with that school. So that's our school selector service. And all you have to do is write to us at info at bkkkids.com to get started. We will be, uh, giving away several things for the people who have registered uh, for this virtual summit. And so, you know, look for an email from us, maybe, if you are randomly selected for these $50 gift cards from Amazon. Um, if you may be selected for some of the eight tickets to Ivana Nava, the water jungle, or my personal favorite, the, that adult giveaway, the one luxury night giveaway at the So Bangkok. Uh, you know, who doesn't want that one night away um, just to enjoy a little? mom and dad time. And with that, I will say thank you so much to everybody for joining us today and yesterday. Please do come over and, and, and visit us over at bkkkids.com or changmykids.com. You can see all of our uh, different, different places to visit us there. And obviously, if you'd like up to the minute updates or up to the second updates, visit us on Facebook, Twitter, or YouTube as well. My name is Stephen Laddick. I'm the director of BK Kids, and I'm, thank you very much for joining us. Have a wonderful day, and we'll see you soon.